I'll guess we could say so. He big film guy. Mm -hmm. He also did stuff with Mark uh, Chris Bell. Okay, the documentaries yeah. and stuff. Yep. So he's been huge in the film. Did you know Napoleon? Why it's Napoleon like complex? He <laughs> the Napoleon complex thing. Because he's a little guy. Well, yeah. Right. Also has micro penis. Oh, huge cock. I had no idea. I had no idea. I know. Yeah, big film guy. <laughs> educated me all about it. I'm like, I didn't even know I was going to watch it, but apparently it's a two and a half hour movie. The four hour movie is coming out on Apple. Oh. And that apparently is very detailed about Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, shit. Super More time for cuck. Yeah, right. <laughs> he said, right. dude, it's fucking crazy. You'll watch it and laugh your balls off. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. I, I mean, even literally, know. like, you'll you'll see the movie. The French newspapers were talking about how his wife was, had, you know, fucking this guy and that guy. Banging a bunch <laughs> they of have dudes. pictures of it, like, videos of him watching, staring at it, like, steaming in the movie. It's hilarious. Yeah, apparently the micro penis though. Okay. Like rough life. Yeah. You, you going to tell him about the rest of the micro penis story? Yeah, so apparently somebody still has his dick and balls in Jersey. His, like his. It's like his. Preserved. Preserved. When he died, they literally looked at his dick and balls and went, oh, this needs to be saved and captured. Yeah, we need to keep this. Yeah. Imagine having yeah. a micro penis and conquering the world. What do you do if you have a micro penis to conquer the world? <laughs> Fuck all of you guys. Hence the Napoleon complex. Yep. I there it no is. I have no idea. Holy shit. Man, melted Napoleon my mind. small dick energy, man. <laughs> <laughs> melted my mind, dude. <sighs> yeah, oh. if you're ever in Jersey, yeah. see if you can see if we have a minute to stop by. It. Yeah, take, yeah. A, take a look to see. <laughs> Dude bought it. What was it a decade ago yeah. for like 15 grand? Dude bought it for 15 G's. I'd have bought Napoleon's dick and balls. Yeah, for I mean, I'd have financed <laughs> his dick and balls. I would expect at least a mil. Yeah. Like I like to think that I'm worth more than that. <laughs> oh man! All right, we ready? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Yep, good stuff. <clears throat> All right, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Fursi. Here's my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Good morning. It has been quite a bit since we had one of these. It has. A couple weeks. But we also have a wonderful guest on the show. We do. The esteemed colleague from Uprising Extracts. You are the owner of that, Mr. Mark Matthews. What's up, guys? Nice to talk. Yeah. So uh, this podcast is brought to you by Uprising Extracts. <laughs> <laughs> no, so today we have on a guest, uh, Mark, you are, there's a ton to talk about. You are quite the anomaly as well. Like we just got done talking about how you're in a film. Yeah. You, uh, your wife is, does uh, stuff with marathons and Ironmans and uh, it is, and we've been talking for probably three and a half, four hours this morning already. Yeah, without Haven't the mic. Yeah. Shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah. all morning long. But um, so uh, Mark is the owner of Uprising Extracts. It is a Kratom company, mm -hmm. and it is something that is new to the fitness industry, and people have been seeing Kratom a lot more. Mat uh, Metragenin? Metragenin is the yeah. alkaloid inside of Kratom. Yeah, yeah. So uh, today it is something that I don't, I haven't talked about it a whole lot yet, how it has helped my life and what it's done for me, uh, what it's done for Hannah, and then what it did to Bob, and a little bit of an adverse effect of what it does for me. Mm -hmm. But people have been seeing MIT45 mm -hmm. and Uprising, a ton within the fitness industry. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Get to know you, where you came from, your background. It is a wild background. The film aspect, we were talking this morning, he's like, no, 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 you know how people in certain industries, they stab you in the back? Film, they stab you right in the fucking front, right in the chest. <laughs> and then they foot your bill for the lunch. Yes. <laughs> that's the way it works. So, but it is, uh, I think that one thing when we started this podcast, we want to bring on a lot of guests mm -hmm. and have real conversations and ask, Real questions, good questions, difficult questions, and get into the nuts and bolts of life and what things are. And Kratom is something that I don't think anybody would have imagined that I would be one that liked it. But I also don't think that people are very educated on what it is and how it helps people yep. and what it can do for them. And, uh, and the good, the bad, the ugly. And I mean, like I said, I wasn't a likely person to have enjoy it as much as I do and what it's been doing for me beneficial wise. So, um, but first, I guess we'll introduce you, give us your background. I mean, you are, <laughs> you are business partners with Guy Sister Nino. I am. Yeah. Don't who hold is, that against me. <laughs> <laughs> who is a, I guess like uh, people would say that the two people in the industry that are podunk hillbilly-esque would be Seth and Guy. Yep. We're just like, he's an East Coast dickhead though. I'm not. <laughs> 
and I'm I'm a Venice Beach, Southern California. Really? Yeah, that's where I was born and raised, man. I didn't know you were a Southern Cal guy. I was. I'm a SoCal guy. Yeah. We, Shane and I just went to San Diego. Beautiful. Love it. Love really it. nice. A yep. lot of really nice, expensive houses there. Very much so. There's also a lot of terrible, shitty, very expensive houses out there. Yeah, there too. I mean, it was pretty wild. We were looking. I'm like, man, that's a. You want a studio for 1.5? That's the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> we. Yeah. It was interesting. It was, but really yeah. nice weather. Um, yeah, yeah, ton exactly. of fucking people. Yeah. But uh, give us your background, um, uh, who you are, how you got to where you are in life. Yeah, Real quick, course, man. So, and we'll get into some questions. And Yeah, I was born, uh, I'm a third generation world champion powerlifter. Comes in my genes. My grandfather was named one of the top 25 supermen of the century by Powerlifting USA. My father was uh, on his way to qualify for the 1984 Olympics, doing Olympic lifting. And unfortunately, he suffered a motorcycle accident in 1984. Third degree burns on 50% of his body. He's doing well now. He's doing great. It was just before I was born. But um, but I bring all this up because fitness, health, that's been my life. That's been my background. The My birth announcement was a fake cover of Iron Man magazine. It's not even a joke. That's what? how That's how my family told the world that I was born, was me in a singlet with a tiny little foam dumbbell telling people he has arrived. <laughs> straight up so this has been part of my life literally my entire life strong family genes strong yeah. genes yes sir i know what it is <laughs> three generations of large family breeding yeah. uh, <laughs> and then uh when i was five or six years old i was diagnosed with something called hip leg perthes like calf perthes it's a degenerative hip disorder i was in a wheelchair for a couple of years what with, yeah i didn't even we didn't even get How into we not talk shit, about that i know right uh, I was in a wheelchair for a couple of years, keeping my legs uh, in a leg brace, keeping them at a 90 degree angle with a steel rod. Like Forrest Gump type angle. stuff. Straight. Except Forrest Gump could run. You I could eat. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Man, that sucks. Yeah. So I was in a wheelchair. But I mean, the good news about that is I have strong genes. And for two, three years, I did nothing but push myself in a wheelchair. Well, that gave me a hell of a leap up when it came to upper body strength. So because of my hip uh, disability, it never really fixed itself. Um, and I wanted to get into powerlifting because my dad, he wasn't able to do Olympic lifting anymore after his accident. So powerlifting was a little bit easier. You know, you do a set, you eat something. Three minutes later, you go push a bar one more time and then you eat again and hang out. That's not bad, right? Yeah, exactly. Powerlifting. <laughs> um, and so I started that when I was 11, 12 years old, started with a bar, just wanted to work out with my dad. And slowly and surely, you know, I did 225 when I was 12 years old. I did 365 when I was 13. 16 years old, 420. Uh, no. I'll show you the videos. Oh, all, yeah, shit. all raw, all natural. Yeah. And then I did 540, weighing uh, 190. Yeah. What? Damn. Yeah. So I had all of that upper body strength, and powerlifting was was my life and was my world, and it was, it was amazing, right? All the while still having my hip disability. So squat was never really in, you know, my – my repertoire, but push pull, I would do some deadlifts. I deadlifted 600 pounds, but I literally did it with one leg. Like I'll show you the video. It's literally one fucking leg. Yeah. <laughs> but I bring all this up because after I um, was in powerlifting, I tore my right pec real, real bad. They had to sew in a cadaver's Achilles tendon, and I still have issues with it. Um, and the doctor said you'll never lift again. And I said, okay, great. So bodybuilding then. And that's exactly what I fucking did. I moved from powerlifting into bodybuilding, immersed myself in that world. Um, and four weeks out from a show, I tore my left one. Mm. <laughs> flat bench, right? Yep. 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 It was yep. flat bench. That son of a bitch, right? <laughs> Never doing it again. So, uh, when I started lifting, my dad told me, I will bestow upon you two great feats. One of them is ungodly strength that is passed down gene to gene to gene. The other is ungodly aches and pains for the rest of your fucking life. You will not have one without the other. Mm. <laughs> and God damn it. He was right. But, um, so I, being part of fitness, health, injuries, uh, I've always known the difficulty in getting out of bed in the morning. You know, the person that can deadlift 800 pounds is walking up to the platform with a limp, right? Um, the person who benches 540 wakes up and goes, ah, I don't know if I can brush my hair today, right? And so I've always been part of that world. Uh, and then... From a professional standpoint, I got into film production. I was, a, I was a child actor for a long, long time on like Even Stevens and Liar Liar. and uh, Really? Yeah, all that weird, fun shit. Because you're in Southern California. Exactly. And remember, I was fat, so I was the token <laughs> fat kid. 
on every single thing. This isn't even a joke. Like when I was on Even Stevens, I had a donut in my hand every single scene. And they would call cut because I didn't have enough powdered sugar on my face. Get out of here. Yeah. So imagine. I love that show. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine like literally going to auditions and they say you didn't get the part. And the reason you didn't get the part was either because you're too fat or because you're not fat enough. Uh. Like imagine where your brain goes. But uh, I didn't want to be in front of the camera anymore. So I moved myself behind the camera. And that's when I uh, met some some great people, started making documentary films, some action films, some you know, the kickboxer, the the remakes that were done with Van Damme and yeah. Mike Tyson. Yeah, I, yeah. Was, I helped produce those those ones that came out. Um, and while we were making those, we love Sean Carter. There he is, yeah, <laughs> Bloodsport. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we were making those, I was friends and partners with Chris Bell, who I'm sure you know. I'm sure. You yeah. Know. Yep. Um, and he was making a movie called A Leaf of Faith that was a direct follow up to Prescription Thugs. Prescription Thugs was about his uh, addictions and about his recovery. And then A Leaf of Faith was uh, a search to find the cure for the macro problem that is the opioid epidemic. And as he was doing that, I needed a complete hip replacement. Time finally caught up to me. And I went to the doctor and I had a prescription pad about an inch thick of all the pills that they were yep. supposed to give me. And I'm looking at my friend, Chris, who literally became an addict because of a botched hip replacement and I'm looking at my life and what it could be yep. if I fill these prescriptions. Yep. And then I was thinking about the movie that he was making. I'm like, hmm, let me see if I can try this out. And the only thing I took for a complete and total hip replacement was Kratom. No shit. Yep. Six weeks after the surgery, I deadlifted 495 for 10 reps. And the only thing I took was Kratom. And that's when I realized, you know what? I think there is something to this. Yep. Yep. And a lot of the information that was out there was about its, you know, uh, opioid reduction and, you know, helping with, with the opioid crisis. And I'm sitting there going, but I'm not an opioid addict. Yep. And I use it every day. Yep. It, 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 uh, there's got to be something more to it. Something's not adding up. Something's not adding up. Because you're feeling dirty at that point. Exactly. I'm yeah. feeling like, why am I taking this thing that's a substitute for something that I'm not taking? There's something more to this, right? Yeah. And through advocacy, science research, trial and error, I, f I came to the conclusion that, you know what, this is not just for that. This is something that soccer moms need when they get migraines, taking their kids to and from practice every day. It's for my dad, who's a preschool teacher, who would just love to you know, toss a kid up in the air and enjoy, but can't do that because he can't lift his shoulders past his nipples. Because he's in pain. Because he's in pain, yeah. exactly. Um, and, and it... No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and whenever I think about that, it's like that's something that just happens with age because the deterioration in life is going to occur. Absolutely. As you get older as a man, it's like you were an athlete. I was a high school athlete. Yeah. And then I was in college and I, I, you know, I played college ball. And then eventually you, your knees hurt, your shoulders hurt, or you were a bodybuilder, a powerlifter, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Everybody at somewhere has some type of pain that eventually catches up to them because now this is this year I turned 40 and I'm like, Hmm, now I know what everybody in the gym used to be like, ah, it's not the same when you get older. I'm like, fuck you old man. And, but it's so true now because really I'm is. like, I'm yeah. my, my son's going to be four. And I'm like, there it is. That's it. Like getting on your hands and knees mm -hmm. and playing with your kid, running around the yard, running around the house. Yep. It gets more difficult to pick them up with one arm and dangle them like Arnold did in the movies. Yeah. You know, all that, like, that gets more difficult as you get older. Right. And so all you want to do is live. You want to thrive. Yeah. Like surviving is great. Thriving is better. And when, when I had that epiphany and realized that this belongs in, in that industry more, it became my relentless pursuit to see this in nutrition stores, fitness stores, grocery stores. That's where it belongs. And um, that, that began my relentless pursuit. I partnered with a couple of different companies uh, along the way and, I learned a great amount of things, and, and the one thing that I learned was how I wanted to do things. And the only way to implement the way that I want to do things is by doing it myself and finding a partner that would enable and empower me to do that. So in it's we'll rewind a little bit. That's Wonderful. It. It's, it's wild that, I mean, <laughs> I didn't know that you were in a wheelchair. I didn't she know was, you were. Yeah. You mentioned child actor this morning. We didn't dive into that you were the fat kid in the movies. But, uh, I mean, it drives, those are things that also probably drove you to lifting weights and drove oh, yeah. you into bodybuilding and being like, no, I want to be in shape. I don't want to be a fat guy. I want to do this. And you, anybody that, you know, the body dysmorphia sets in, 
My nickname was Chubbs when I was younger. Yep. Like all those things add up. And Bob used to be a 285 pound fat guy. Now he runs Ironmans at 190 pounds. Incredible. Unfucking real. And it's just like people were capable of some pretty incredible shits. Yeah. Uh, but so you got in the film and you were doing, uh, you did the movie with Chris Bell. Chris Bell is notorious. Uh -huh. in our industry from the uh bigger faster Insurance stronger faster. yeah so i mean it's always like it's those things that whenever he came out with that movie dude i love that movie. yeah everybody loved that movie it was so well done it was great and then prescription thugs was the next one and and mark owning all of the stuff mm -hmm. that he's done and what he's done and how open they have been has done great things and it's like with you were involved with the movie that he did with that um, with, uh, what was it? A Leaf of Faith. A Leaf of Faith. Yeah, so Chris and I were, we were gonna make a couple of documentaries together. One of them was called Stronger, which was basically the pumping iron version of World's Strongest Man. We wanted to follow the right people, make, make that movie. And for various reasons, that one fell through. And uh, because my time was served doing that one, um, when that fell through, I was like, oh, well, which one are you working on now? How can I help? So. I helped uh, on a lot of you know various different menial tasks that uh, that that movie was making, and that's what really got me immersed into the world and seeing Chris, and then seeing you know the the potential answer to the questions that are out there. But then with yeah. the kratom, whenever yeah. you were having your hip replacement, mm -hmm. that's what you saw in him that he had went through yes. that, and that's whenever because he that's why he made prescription thugs yep. was because he got addicted to it yep. and put it out there, and that was where you were like no go. No go. It was a literal fork in the road. Going to do Kratom. Yep. And that's where, uh, I mean, so that was your first interaction with Kratom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First one. Yep. Right there. Um, how, what was, I mean, I don't know where to go from this. There's so <laughs> many, there's so many angles here. It's so like, many different avenues, how yeah. do we get into this? Because it is such an unmarked territory because you're like, I'm not an opioid addict. People associate Kratom with opioids mm -hmm. so much because it is something that opioid addicts take to quote unquote, replace the feeling. It helps. It helps wean off of um, various different opioids. I think the the next place to start is what the fuck is Kratom? Yeah, I was just going to say because mm -hmm. that's, anybody yeah. that's involved with opioids, it's like, dude, holy shit. Yeah, because so, right now I'm just saying a word and everyone's like, what the hell is this thing? When are you going to get to it? You let's know? go. Stop yes. playing just the tip. Let's stick it in, you know? Go all the way. <laughs> what is Kratom and metragyny? Sure. So Kratom is a coffee leaf. It comes from Indonesia. And what they found is that many tribes in Indonesia for thousands of years, they've cultivated themselves where it grows indigenously. They consider it to be part of their soul, their life's blood. Um, during the day, they take the leaves, they chew the leaves, helps them give them energy, helps mitigate general discomfort that they might have during their laborious days. And then at night, they don't have any social intoxicants or social lubricants, no cannabis, no alcohol. So they brew it into a tea. They drink that. And they help, it helps them enjoy themselves, get rest, recover for the next day, et cetera. That's uh, what Kratom is. Um, in the 70s, a lot of Vietnam veterans found Kratom while they were out there. And it allowed them to you know, mitigate some of the things that were going on in Vietnam. Some of them brought it back um, to, to the United States. And that's how it slowly and surely got a, for lack of a better phrase, grassroots start in the United States, whether it was for PTSD that they were using it for, or, you know. Um, the, opi whatever, the, the opioid what, effects yeah, that they, they yeah, had over the, there with the all the opium. They had exactly over there. Um, and so it found its way over here and slowly and surely it started to be sold at head shops, smoke shops, counterculture stores, um, because that's where the target audience was yeah. for its general trajectory. Uh -huh. uh, they put it next to things like bath salts and spice and, you know, a, a wild in, section, in the synthetic shelf, right? Hence where the dirtiness comes from. Exactly. Exactly. And so when it pigeonholes itself in that industry, people believe that it's for that. Yeah. And it's not for that. Like if this conversation were to end right now, Anyone that's listening to this would go, oh, hey, there's there's something out there for opioid addicts. That's great. I'm not an opioid addict, but yeah. I'm glad there's something for them. And yeah, they really great story. Every day. Yep. And that is doing such a disservice to what this can possibly do yep. because of the amazing benefits it has. So if you imagine your me receptor in your brain, the me receptor is your neurotransmitter receptor. Anytime your brain's telling your body how to feel, right? Um, if you imagine 
opioids work off of it. That's why some people call it the opioid receptor. It's not an opioid receptor, but opioids work off of it, right? Chocolate works off of it. Um, cheese works off of it. ADD medication, ADHD, antidepressants, antipsychotics, all of those things work off of it, right? If you imagine that as a piano, right? When you take an opioid, it plays exactly the song that it's, it, it's intended to play. It binds just to that particular part and does just that. Everybody hears the same song. Same song, Beethoven, every single time, right? If you take ADD or focus enhancing medication, it binds to just that particular part and you hear the Rocky theme every time, right? -na 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 -na. Every single time, okay? Kratom is wholly unique in that it doesn't bind to any particular spot. It's a jukebox. That jukebox allows you to play the tune that you want it to play based off of the intent of what you're doing. Now, people think that, that makes me sound like a snake oil salesman when I say that. Bit. But if you imagine, if your brain is telling your body how to feel, let's just say you're about to go work out. What is your brain telling your body? Let's go fuck shit let's up. Let's go fuck shit up. Get fucking ready, That's big right. boy. Get shit done. Uh, before you go to bed, what is your brain telling your body? You need to go to sleep. Get rest. rest. Go sleep. Calm down. Relax. Right? So if you have something that free flows, interacts with that receptor, and enhances that particular portion of the receptor or that particular intent... That's how Kratom works. See, I heard this story. That's why you're sitting on this podcast. Yeah. And I would say you're absolutely full of fucking shit. Yep. Because you're like, oh, so like you're talking about like the greatest thing that could ever come to the planet. Yep. And my response to that would simply be, try it and you tell me. So that's where I am. Yeah. The reason that Mark is on this podcast right now is because back in January, Guy Sister Nino hit me up just because Guy and I are friends. We talk like once a month. Every now and then he'll shoot me a text and, hey, dude, what's up? And I'm like, what the fuck? What? Hey, man, I got a nice <laughs> friend that's going to say hi to me. Now, everybody that knows there's been some really crazy shit going on here. We had uh, uh, another business partner is gone and it's been very stressful. And in that time, I was also doing the month of mayhem. Mm. In the month of mayhem, I was doing a hero workout every single day of the week, uh, every single day of the month for 31 days straight. They're crazy CrossFit workouts to beat the fuck out of your body. Yeah. And I was like, I always wanted to do it for 31, for, for just a period of time. I watch other guys do it and I'm tough, but it was something to help get my mind right. And we filmed every day that month as well. And guy hit me up and my body is beat. It's sore. It's tired. I'm not sleeping well, super stressed out and have some anxiety in my life. And guy hit me up and we were just talking and I was like, dude, how's everything going? I saw uprising. I was like, how's go is your company doing good? And he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, I'll send you some. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't want your drugs. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is, but I don't want it, dude. I'm not, I'm not even remotely industry, interested. I'm just wondering how the company's doing. Are you making money from it? He's like, Seth, he's like, like, no, do you know anything about it? I'm like, no. And I don't really care to know because I'm just not into it, dude. I was like, I don't really like fucking with certain things. I don't like the CBD. I don't really smoke too much weed anymore. He's like, well, that's not what this is, but I, I get it. He's like, well, I, I could tell you a little bit about it. I'm like, I was like, all right, you know what? We're talking. Let, tell, tell me about it. How can your fucking wonderful drug save me let, from let what's me, going humor on? Humor me. Let's go, dickhead. Because <laughs> it's nice to have a relationship with somebody where you can be friends and also be very real. Of course. And, and him be accepting to me being kind of an asshole about it, but caring about him and the well-being of his life and his company. And he said that you are way more versed in this. He's like, I'll give you the, I'll give you the guy version of it. I'm like, all right, let's hear it, dude. He said, he's like, he's like, you're having trouble sleeping. This can help you with your sleep. And, he, and, and he's saying, you're having a lot of pain. He's like, that's what this does with pain management. I'm like, yeah, it's like opioids. He's like, it's not like opioids, Seth. <laughs> and he just broke it down in the way of saying, just try it. Yeah. He's like, you're a pretty crazy guy. You've tried a million crazy things under the sun. This one is actually going to help you. And I'm like, all right, all right, maybe he's got something. And then he's like, He's like, Seth, he's like, Branch loves this. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, what do you, I was like, great, what do you mean? He's like, dude, he's like, Branch ended up getting hurt, hurting himself. He broke his hand or something and he was having trouble sleeping. He was in a lot of pain and he just wasn't having good feelings. And he's like, so Branch ate a gummy at nighttime yep. and then he ended up getting great sleep and waking up and being able to like have a little more mobility in his hand because he just didn't feel as much pain. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, Branch loves it. And as we're talking, he sends me the video of Branch talking about it. I'm like, man, Branch is a fucking asshole because I know Branch and he doesn't even like insulin. Yeah. And every meathead <laughs> loves insulin. So for, guy, for, for Branch to say this, and I'm like, all right. I was like, I'm, I'm having some shoulder pain, some knee pain. Yeah. I was like, and I am very, very anxious and I'm having trouble sleeping. I was like, I, why not, dude? Sure. I, there wasn't a whole huge educational portion about 
you know, metragenin yeah. and all this. And I was like, all right, cool. So I got them in and Anna saw them and she's like, what are those? <laughs> and I'm like, they're these gummies that guys sent me. They're supposed to help me feel better at night. And she's like, oh, okay. oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She's like, they look like shit. <laughs> like i was like i was like all right babe fuck off version 1.0 so i was like i was like she's like they smell like shit too i'm like fuck you okay cool. Lo i love your support so <laughs> i eat it and because guy was like he's like you'll feel it he's like he's like but just stay calm and he's like just just do your thing of your normal routine and then and then let me know how you feel and i'm like fuck it sure so i ate the gummy and then about 20 minutes later i'm like oh Hmm. I definitely feel different. Hmm. Okay. You could feel it. A little bit of a different body feel. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel like I'm going to get really, really fucking high. Like I just smoked too much weed. <laughs> That's what I feel like. And I started getting a little anxious and then I'm like, I should probably eat something. Cause if I eat something, I usually feel better when I eat something. I'm like, you can't go eat and everything trying to mask a feeling. Just feel it. Calm the fuck down. So sat on the couch and I sat there and I'm like, man, I, I, I feel good. This is a nice feeling. And he's and guy was telling me that people take it for pre-workout. Hmm. Why would they why, why am I taking it that? at night? Yeah. I'm like, I feel pretty good. So then I end up saying fuck it. And I was like, I'm just gonna go to sleep. I slept the entire night. The whole fucking night I slept. And I woke up and I'm like, oh my God. I slept the whole the whole time. I didn't wake up to pee. I didn't wake up and like move or go eat a peanut butter and jelly rice cake. I slept. I got up and I was like, I start the coffee and Hannah's like, you didn't get up all night. I'm like, I know. I ate the gummy. And she's like, it wasn't the gummy. And I'm like, I haven't Might slept like, now. I haven't slept like this in weeks, months. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, cool, cool. I was like, I slept good. I slept good. And I'm like, and then throughout the day, I was like, I don't know if this is real or not. I have no idea. Maybe it's a placebo effect. And I was like, well, Seth, you're Mr. Fucking Experiment, so what do you do? Three days on, three days off. Just do it and see what happens. So for the next two days after that, I took it and I slept both nights all the way through. And I came in and I told Bob, I was like, Bob, you won't believe what the fuck I took. And this is crazy. <laughs> he's like, what'd you do? So I told him all about it. And he's like, really? Because I'm a very unlikely person to say these things. Yeah, for him to bring it to the table and not me bring it to the table to explain it, like very reverse roles. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm not a CBD guy. Right. I, I, I don't know, I'm just not. And, uh, and I'm very, I don't like many things that alter my state of mind. Mm -hmm. I like to Same. absorb everything. However, this, I'm like, man, this is pretty crazy. And I told Guy, I was like, hey, there might be something to it. And he's like, I fucking told you. <laughs> I'm like, that's something I would that, say back. So yeah, I get it. Guy, so it so I'm like, like all right, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. I was like, so then I was like, I'm gonna do three days off. Yeah. And then on my three days off, uh, in the beginning, I was like, cool. I was like, maybe I should keep taking them. And I was like, nope, full experiment. Didn't take it. And my sleep was not as good. It was normal. Which... It was normal, which is wake up in the middle of the night, yeah. go eat a snack. Yeah. Do something comforting for myself to sleep at nighttime to make sure that I feel comfortable in bed. Like it's just something that I do. Yep. My mind races. And uh, and then whenever it came time for the three days on, I'd, I ate it and then 30 minutes go by and then I go to bed. And I'm like, I'm sleeping very good on this. And I did it for weeks. And then that's whenever Hannah, because I started not complaining about my shoulder when I wake up in the morning because I'm a side sleeper. Mm -hmm. So then I didn't have shoulder pain when I wake up in the morning. I'm like, so I don't have fucking shoulder pain on my left side because I sleep on my left side. Yeah. I'm like, I'm getting sleep at night. I was like, fuck me. I was like, I think this is real. I think it's, it's almost like you're upset that you have to tell I, guy that he's right. I, I'm not going to lie. It does <laughs> there. But I'm like, I just want to run my own experiments so I can give my own. Because I, I go off a lot of anecdotal experience rather than just always go off the science. I'm the bro science yep. guy. I'm like, Tell me what you felt. Tell me what you think and how it could help me. Yep. And that's whenever I was like, okay. And Hannah was noticing that I'm sleeping better. I'm not bitching about my shoulder when I wake up in the morning. I'm moving better. And uh, she's like, do you think it helped me? Because Hannah has crazy neck pain. Mm. Crazy neck pain. Her tits are huge. She's small. Has a ton of hair. She's four foot 11. Like, she's not a big woman. So she has a crazy amount of ne neck pain. Like I, we, she's got injections uh, every single night, rubbing her neck. Like she's always, you'll see Hannah. If you, see, if you see her for uh, two hours, mm -hmm. you'll see her do this a hundred times. And uh, I was like, Hey, I think this will work. 
I was like, it's helping me because Hannah used to smoke a ton of weed before SJ. Yeah. Before she got pregnant, she smoked weed every single night. And she and and took a ton of crazy high anxiety medications, like the bad ones. Yeah. Um, her mother passed when she was 18 years old, 17 years old. She had her mom got stage four cancer, like just r- rough at that teenage pinnacle part of life of growing. So crazy anxieties. And uh, and she's like, I was like, try it. <laughs> Fucking worst could happen. <laughs> it's one time. I was like, I love it. I was like, actually, like at nighttime, like sometimes like I do my paperwork at night. I was like, you see me get into my paperwork and then I go right to bed. It's really nice. I get zoned in and then I can just pass out. She's like, okay. So I'm like, man, I was like, I wonder if it's going to affect her the same way. Because guys said it doesn't affect everybody the same way. And uh, and then she took it. And the next morning she's like, how many of those gummies do you have? <laughs> I'm like, I was like, why? She's like, I slept really good. I was like, all right. And she's like, I slept the whole night. I'm like, holy fuck, there might be something to it. So her and I have become like, like we eat a gummy every single night before we go to bed. And uh, on whenever she travels for gymnastics, mm-hmm. like this is a busy time for her. She, she takes him with her and she's like, she's like, this is helping me so much. I'm like, for her and I to like something is so unlikely to happen. And that's whenever I was like, and I was talking to guys like, you got to talk to Mark. Dude. <laughs> I was like, I need to know what the fuck this is yeah. and how it's affecting me because this is real. This isn't a fucking joke. Yeah. This is helping me in a way. And guys like, you need to take it for a workout. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> I was like, not doing it, dude. I was like, I don't want to fuck this nighttime thing up. And he's like, dude, you got to. And then that's whenever I talked uh, after that, you yeah. and I finally got on the call and, uh, and you were telling me all about it. And Bob tried it, but he had an opposite effect of what I have at nighttime. I love nighttime. Yeah. But apparently this is not a likely thing to occur for for people. A lot of people don't like it nighttime? No, it's literally there are people that take one gummy before their cardio and you're supposed to do 45 minutes, they'll do 52 minutes. Why? Cuz fuck it. That's why. Yeah. Uh, there are people that will take one gummy during their workout and same thing, their body will give out long before their brain does. There are people that'll take one gummy before bed and sleep like a baby. It literally is. If I hand you a bottle and say, take one of these before each of those three things and all of those three things will be enhanced. Again, you're going to look at me like, what the fuck are you trying to sell me, dude? Like yeah. there's a better sales pitch than the, the woo-woo magic you're trying to show me. That's what I mean. Yeah. So then I got <laughs> on the phone with you and I was like, hey, we got to get on a podcast and start telling people yeah. about this because this is actually helping me at a time whenever it is fucking mayhem in my life. And my this life is not is, something that you do often. Like that's that's what I'm saying. Like, no, you, I like I like me. I like dick pills and steroids. <laughs> <laughs> that's more my mo. Okay, I, mean, I like pre workouts, yeah. dick pills and steroids. Well, but it's I'm, but those and that's the crazy side yeah. of my life. And that's really what brought me there was because as I get older, I, like that value and and that and what it does for me in life. Yeah, like yeah. I need to be mentally on my game for my businesses. Mm. I need to be physically in my shit for training because it helps me. Yeah. I like being physically fit. I enjoy it. I like training. But then I also need to make sure that I'm a good dad and I'm making sure that I am the best motherfucker I can be in every single aspect of my life. And whenever you have some heavy shit happen to you, bro, it's going to affect all those other things. Of course. So the fact that there is something out there that was helping me sleep better to become better, I'm like, this is pretty fucking crazy. And doing it for Hannah as well, because she's has her game with gymnastics, like and being a mother of three, like there's a lot of shit going on. So the fact that it's helping me, an owner of a multi million dollar company, and then Hannah, who's a mother of three in gymnastics, it's like this is a this is not a joke. There's a lot to it, and people need to know what this does and how it can help you. Because afterwards, yeah. after I talked to you, you were like, "Hey, you need to go take one," because I was about to train. I was yeah. talking to you in my office. I remember, yeah. and I was like. I'm going to eat a gummy before I train. I don't know how it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's the worst that can happen to be one workout? Yeah. So I go and take it. I fucking take my pre-workout. And I get into it. And then I'm like, oh, man, there's that feeling. Like, I don't, it's that I, that I took something. And I'm like, oh, man, just fucking do your trainings. Just get into it. And all of a sudden, I'm in the zone. And I'm like, whoa. I'm training. I'm like, I feel like I should be doing more. (laughs) I feel like just doing back is not a good idea. I feel like I should be doing a CrossFit workout right now. Go from here to here to here to here and kill everything. I'm like, I was having trouble zoning in on just doing close grip cable. 
shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I should be doing so much more. And I was like, I could see how one could take this in the morning yep. and feel like they need to do everything under the sun. It's a procrastination and that's, killer. And that's where you were talking about that, uh, like how it plays a different song yep. for everything. I'm exactly. like, how am I eating a fucking gummy that puts me to sleep? And right now I feel like I should do everything. This does not make sense to me. I don't understand it. Hence why we're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to go back to what you were saying, you yeah. had a you had a different response. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had a history of like my mind just not shutting down at mm -hmm. night. I, it's not no added stress or anxiety. Like, yeah, that amplifies it. But I, I always have a, a hard time going down at night unless it's just sheer exhaustion. Like if I'm just purely exhausted from training and busy work day, I'll go down. But nine, nine nights out of 10, I have a hard time going to sleep. So I took one. It was actually a few days like you were asking, hey, did you take it last yeah. night? And I, and I didn't. And you're like, what are you doing? Like, you're, you're so quick to try <laughs> everything, else. everything under the sun. So um, I finally took them home with me and, and I tried one. Uh, my wife tried one with me because we usually uh, burn one before, you know, we go to bed. Um, so we did not smoke. And then we both took the gummy. And it just my mind started racing like fucking crazy <laughs> and to the point of like um i did go down i did fall asleep but it's one of those like sleep patterns where you just feel like you are awake the entire time and your mind still not stops running you are asleep but, but you're not but your run but, cycle and your oh deep sleep it just wasn't there. it was not there and yeah. then um you know we woke up and i didn't feel like there's no grogginess associated. There's no like of these like lasting effects. And I was like, Hey, I was like, how did you sleep last night? I asked Kim and she's like, I was like kind of up all night. Like my mind was just racing. I'm like, that's so weird. I'm like, we both had the same effect here tonight. I was like polar opposite of what Seth and Hannah were, were <laughs> explaining to us. So what, what's the deal? What, what's, what's going on with that? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, the, the, Easy answer is you're fucking broken. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've, been, I've been told, dude, I've been told before. Yeah. I've been... <laughs> no, the 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 simple answer is again, it it, it works depending upon the intent, um, and every body is different. Everyone's intent is different. Every neurochemical response is is different. With kratom, they've found that um, the higher amount that you take, the more sed sedation occurs. And oh, that's really? all person and body dependence as well. So your high uh, serving would be different from my high serving. For example, I've been in this industry for almost 10 years now, and I've never intentionally taken more than 60 milligrams. That's just, it works perfectly for me. I never need to take more. I've had weeks, months where I've never taken it. I've, I've had weeks, months where I only take 20 milligrams and it works. That's just, that's where I am. Guy, for some reason, his body is different. He takes uh, like 125 in the morning and then he might take another 125 at night. So that's literally five times. I'm, you take I'm taking 20 through. milligrams, yeah. one gummy before bed and guys taking 125 meg shots. Yeah. Whenever he told me that, I'm like, guy, what's happening? Do we, do we need to, to have a talk? Like that's, like, and, and those yeah. are the things because I'm so uneducated about yeah, the concept and I'm like, is there a threshold? Like, well, how does this all work? Because it's so, it's so open, and there's not much education about there. There's because the second that you look this up on the on the internet, Good it's on. like you are a fucking de dirty, degenerate yep. piece of shit. You're fucking horrible, and it's like, well, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, this is actually helping me. But then, like the the, the dosages and how it all works, because. My whole thing, even though I joke around about the dick pills and the, and the steroids and all that, it's, it's like you want to get as much as you can from as little as possible. Of course. That is always the goal within Minimum anything. effective dose. Yes, yes. That is what you always want to go for because eventually everything builds. Yep. Even your caffeine. Like, oh, look, we got energy drinks. We love them. Yeah. But if you drink one, imagine if at some point you're going to drink two and three, and then one doesn't have the same effect as three any longer. Right. So... I mean, those are, I guess those are all questions that we're going to need to get into here, but yeah, with, with the 20 milligrams and how it affects me, yeah. I've never taken anything more than 20. Well, to me, you've found what I believe to be your minimum effective dose because 20 milligrams works well for you. You get great sleep, you get amazing workouts, you get shit done. To me, there's no reason why, I mean, other than being a, a 
gym bro bodybuilder that goes yeah, find out 20 is great then Fuck 80 is going to be your better. yeah let's find <laughs> right? out yeah exactly and that's um, kind of the only way you can learn really really is yeah, yeah it really is but to me when i found 60 i was like that's that's my happy spot that's my good spot i'm good there i don't need to chase a feeling i don't need to chase anything i'm i'm good there yeah. so for you you tried one one gave you energy for lack of a better easier way of explaining it mm -hmm. Taking two might provide more of a sedate effect. That's up to you and your experience and your uh, experiments mm -hmm. as to how you want to go forward with that. But what I will say is you are taking a low amount based off of what some people take to a very high amount to relatively no side effects, which I know we'll get into the side effects. But yeah, sure. if you're concerned about, oh, I took 20, I don't know if I could take 30. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't. Because yeah, sorry, what works say. no, no, and I mean that—that's exactly you know because like when you take something that um, whether whatever it is, yeah. and you have that kind of effect, it's like oh, I'm not trying that again. Of course, type yeah. deal, and you'd think you know, adding to it would just amplify enhance, yeah, enhance exactly. that even more. But no, that that does make sense, yeah. and I am interested in 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 trying that experiment because, I mean, I mean how after talking with Seth and then you know Alvin and. Even all Alvin had the people. same effect as me. Alvin's yeah, like, my HRV, thing. man. He's I'm, like, I'm it's like, killing it. Sleeping yeah. better. I was yeah. like, why isn't it working? Lower like, fucking, it working? he had a lower beats per minute, everything. Yeah. And I'm like, man, so me feeling better actually is in your science because Alvin tracks everything. Yeah. It was wild. But yeah. like, but after that, like I, I started reading up on it even more and I'm like, the amount of training that I do, all the endurance sports and, yeah. and then the, the job that we have here. And I'm like, this this is almost like a perfect formula for me to have really great training sessions, to recover from training sessions, to get better sleep from the training sessions. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I need to, I need to experiment more. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, do. That's, that's the, that's the simple, easy answer. If you, if you imagine there are people that can drink a decaf cup of coffee at 10 AM and stay up till 2 AM and there are people that can drink an espresso at 2 AM and fall asleep at 205. Right. right. <laughs> Everybody is different. Everyone's tolerance point is different. Everyone's mm -hmm. reaction and response is different. Mm -hmm. Just have to figure out what that is and what that looks like. And that's, and that's, what's wild about, I, I don't, I, the Kratom and Metragen. Yes. We'll get into that. The yes. differences of that for everything, but like, that's the tough thing because, um, it has a bad connotation mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And the education portion is everything. So it's like even with pre-workouts and caffeine, like caffeine is so accepted. It's just like you see a fucking 15-year-old drinking an energy drink and you're like, oh, yeah, man, is that good? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I got the Skittles flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're like, fuck, dude, yeah. this is nuts. So it's kind of like right now learning about this is, is everything. And, I mean, even for me um, with taking it during the day, because I don't want to take something constantly for something. I'm, that's yeah. the one thing where I'm like, I don't want to take it every single night for the rest of my life. Yep. I hate that dependency concept. You never want to look at something and go, this equals that. The yeah. only thing I do that in life, and that's what Ty, when we were talking about it one day in the gym, we were joking, and Ty's like, oh, you mean so the only thing you want to be dependent on is anabolics? <laughs> I was like, fuck you, Ty. Because <laughs> oh, I'm on test for the rest of my life. But it, oh, I miss it, those days. It's, <laughs> but, but, um, but no, it's in, in all of its, uh, I guess some of the questions that we'll get into is yep. like uh, the different times of taking it, mm -hmm and taking it throughout the day and the side effects associated with like, okay, I take it at daytime, I take it pre-workout and I take it at night. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do we, where should you take it? But then that's also where you're like, we talked this morning, you're yep. like, dude, dosages yeah. and how much your thresholds and where you should be, so. It's again, using caffeine, using all of these things, it's the same analogy. I, I like to use those because it is a coffee leaf, um, but it, uh, it, it doesn't work the same as coffee, but it's a good analogy to use and utilize because it's the most readily available analogy to understanding everybody's every body is different. And I'll also say this is this is an education podcast. This is you know if if someone doesn't want to be educated on this, it's fine. Don't fucking listen to it. All right. If someone you know I'm not trying to sell my brand at all. I'm trying to just explain uh, and answer questions. Uh, dude, no, and, all yeah. this, the people, all of, all of this, the, I mean, dude, this is very interesting yeah. because, I mean, we do it with our supplements. We do it yep. with everything that we do. It's, it's interesting. This is something that the unlikelihood of this helping me is what fascinated me and blew my fucking mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm very particular about things. Yeah. 
And and that's why I was like, man, this is pretty, this is fucking nuts. Yeah. And the fact that it all came from a friendship call. Yep. It, it came from guy calling me at a time whenever I was in a little bit of a rough spot mentally of like, fuck, I got to be a savage. Yeah. But I'm not sleeping well. It's like it was, it was something that we were struggling with. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, hmm. Like I have this belief of the way of the world. Yep. You know, there's there's always there's karma. There's the way of the way of the universe. Yep. What goes around comes around. Treat people the way you want to be treated. It's so funny because like, whether it's religion, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Karma, spirituality, what goes around comes around. Mm-hmm. And for every action, there's a reaction. Like they all say the same fucking thing. Yep. They are literally all saying the same thing in different ways in religion, sure. spirituality, and science. Yep. But it literally is that. And literally so the, 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 yeah. the, the likelihood of him calling me at a time whenever what he was doing for his company was actually able to help me at this time point, I'm like, hmm, there's something fucking to that. Well, I'll even extend on that because the origin story of Guy and I's meetup is e- extremely similar to what's going on, what happened with, with you and Guy. The only difference is I had never met him. Heard him on a podcast. He said that he had bulging discs and he was in an ungodly amount of pain. He took half the amount of serving that the doctor recommended for him for his oxycodone and then posted a video of him just dripping in sweat after taking half the amount that he was supposed to. And I live in Houston. He was going to Destination Dallas. And uh, I had a friend of a friend and I said, hey, man, give me his information. So he got me his information. And um, and I said, hey, guy, you don't know who I am. Um, My friend vouches for me. So hopefully that that goes far enough. I will drive the four and a half hours up to come see you. The only thing I ask is that you try the thing that I have. And he goes, man, I'm in so much fucking pain. I'll do whatever. So I drove up there, met at destination, gave him the shot, went back to his hotel, which admittedly he'd never met me before. He's like, let me come up to my hotel room and drink this liquid shot to see what happens to me. (laughs) Probably not the best (laughs) rule of judgment for Guy Cisternino on that day. But, um, but you're a meathead. You're a fellow meathead. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so he, he tried it. We sat down 10 minutes. We we're just shooting the shit. He gets up to go to the bathroom. He stands up and he goes, Holy shit. I'm like, talk to me. What's up? He goes, what was it that you just gave me? I said, you tell me, tell me how you feel. He goes, man, my back is 60 to 70% better. I have my shoulders are fine. I mean, there's always pain in my shoulders and I don't know if I can run a marathon or sleep for 12 hours right now, but I feel like I can do either if that's what I was doing. This is absolutely insane. I went, everything that you just said is part and parcel to every single story that we've heard. Whether or not we have exact science that is backed by X, Y, or Z to explain it, bro science, anecdotal science, that's what we have. What you just said is something that I hear multiple times a day. It's crazy. And that's when you look at me and goes, we got to do something with this. And fast forward to where we are right now, he is doing exactly what I hoped would be done and what my origin story is, his origin, and now your origin story with this. And hopefully, if it works, yeah, yours as well, which is I try something and I'm so blown away by it that I go, who's in my network of people that I can speak to that this can help? Because I got to fucking tell them. Whatever it is, I just I just feel like I have to fucking tell him. That's what I did with Guy when I ha- found out that he was in pain. That's what Guy did with you yeah. when you guys spoke. And that's why we're here right fucking now. All, all I'm thinking about right now is my dad. My dad just had a complete shoulder replacement. Man. And he was really, really great post-op, first couple days, first week. He is in an ungodly amount of pain right no. now. No shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost regressing. No. A little bit, I'm sorry. but that's all I can think he about. Paints for a living, and yeah, he's oh, a painter. Gosh. Yeah, so like the faster, yeah, 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 faster he can get back, you know, get the shoulder yeah. back, he can get back to work. Yeah. So I mean, this I'm literally that's all I've been thinking about. Guy this sent last, me, like, guy sent me minutes. a duffel bag for the gummies. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> okay, I, we ran out of gummies. We ran out of gummies at the house, yeah. and I was like, guys, like I ran out of gummies. <laughs> I was like, can you send me a couple bags? And he's like, yeah, I got you. And so he said you had dunk tank he, size. And he sent me the picture. He's like, I got y'all set up. I'm like, you know, I sent you the text 30 minutes ago. He's like, going out tomorrow morning. I get this giant fucking bag. And I'm like, guy. It's comical. But um, yeah, with the understanding that obviously we can't say that we treat, cure, diagnose, treat any diseases or anything like that. All I can do is provide it to your dad. The mm-hmm. same way that I provided it to my dad. Who again has zero cartilage in both of his shoulders would 
absolutely love to lift his grandkids in the air, let yeah. alone brush his hair without having to come down like this when he does it. Mm -hmm. He takes a half a gummy twice a day and it subsides 90% of that. My grandmother, who's mid 80s, has you know that many pills that she takes in a day. Mm -hmm. She's now a gummy. It is that's what that's what is blowing because Hannah's also like a little mind melted about yeah. it as well because it's like all the different things that can happen and she's like this is actually helping me and it's like Hannah's not very good at like elaborating or explaining to mm -hmm. people but she's like she's just a small mom of three but yep. you know she has her company and yep. does great and all this but like dude being a being a mother of three takes a fucking toll on you yeah, yeah. if you're a working mother of three. Oh, why do you think there's so many, you know, wino moms? You know what I mean? That's where it comes from. It yep. comes from the stress of the day. It comes from the anxieties of life. It comes from all those things. And I'm like, okay, how in the flying fuck is this possible that it goes from having this negative connotation from opioid addicts to helping people, regular schmoes with pain in their days as they get older, mm -hmm. to the whole entire fitness industry because there's not one person in the fitness industry that doesn't have an ache or a pain or a sleeping issue or a recovery issue yep. or trying to optimize their life to get better yep. all the way to a soccer mom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this is pretty fucking wild. Yeah. And that's why it's like, you're like, well, you sound like a snake oil salesman. But at the same time, I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm part of that. I'm part of the cycle. <laughs> yeah. I'm part of it. Like and this snake. is snake. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I guess the the the. I guess the next question would be, like you, we were talking about kratom and then the metragenin. Yes, thank you. Okay, so, so w w how where are they correlated? Sure. What is the difference or the similarities or what is it? Yeah, so kratom is the leaf. Uh, inside of the leaf, there are multiple different alkaloids: um, metragenine, seven hydroxymetragenine, speciosiline, a couple of other ones. Um, metragenine inside of the kratom plant is the alkaloid that causes the effects that we find beneficial. So that's what interacts with the mu receptor. That's what does all of those things. And that alkaloid, if you imagine like with cannabis, you have a cannabis leaf and then you have a cannabinoid THC, right? What if, if all you were doing was taking cannabis, but you didn't know how much THC was in each thing, right? You would never be able to know the benefit of what you're taking and how it works. Nor right? how strong it is. Exactly. Well, inside of a kratom leaf, doesn't matter what strain it is. It doesn't matter, you know, where it comes from, how it's derived, any of those things. Metragenine, the alkaloid that we're looking for, isn't regulated and standardized. So you never know one gram of powder equals 10 milligrams of metragenine. 10 grams equals this. You, you, you don't know that when you're just working with kratom, the leaf or the plant. So what we've done is we have extracts. So we extract metragenine. We provide products that have that specific alkaloid that you're looking for. That way, every single time you take our product, it's never a crapshoot. One of the things that you'll read if you go on Reddit forums or online, yeah. or all of these different you know, people that are enthusiasts of kratom is they'll, they'll buy one brand, right? They'll try this batch and go, oh, that one made me sick. Same brand, same product, next batch. Oh my God, I didn't feel anything. Same brand, next product. Oh my God, it felt great. All same brand, same product line, different batches. Reason for that again is because it's not standardized. So without the standardization, you aren't able to control the intended effects that you're that you looking for. Well, that's what I was gonna say. So you're actually figuring out how much you're extracting. Yes to make the product. Exactly, exactly that. And so that's what Uprising started as. We didn't want to be uh, the capsules and powders brand because we didn't have a mechanism to control those things. So we started as just extracts, provided those extracts to each and every one of our athletes, guys, friends, my, my friends, any of those individuals and said, here, I hope this helps you. And almost every single one of them came, came back and said, this fucking helps me. And that's how we've built our team of individuals that, you know, when we, when Guy and I first started, we had people like Nick Walker, who it, people think it was fake. It wasn't fake. It was on the uh, guy's podcast with Nick. Yeah. He's literally like, dude, I fucking love your gummies. How can I help? And guy's like, I, I, I can give you a code. And he goes, done. Absolutely. 
there was no contract. There was no negotiation. There was none of those things. It was just, here's a fucking code. Because again, just like what I told you, motherfucker found it worked for him and said, I got to tell everyone about this. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. And so we, we built in a mass of what we call bodybuilding's best kept secret, which let's be honest with businessmen, we don't want to be the best kept secret. We wanted to be out there. <laughs> well, no, no, but not only that, but yeah. it's also, uh, cause whenever, whenever, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation next back to the metragen. Yes. Yes. So, cause whenever I was talking to guy, that was my big thing. I'm like, why do I see so much bad shit about it? Yep. Then? I was like, why do I see so much bad shit? And why do I hear stories about this batch versus this batch yep. or this? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, it's not standardized. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and there's other companies just out there selling shit. Yes. Because so, there's because you can get a bunch of quote unquote Kratom mm -hmm. for super cheap somewhere else. Oh, yeah. And you can just get it and have it. Yep. Kind of how people like to make their own supplements. Yeah. Or think they can do this or work with manufacturer over here when they're actually kind of shit bags. So I was like, what does it make difference? And he's like, we have a quality manufacturer. I'm like, great story. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyone that, that looks up Kratom or goes on Kratom on their uh, on social media, they will immediately be inundated with Kratom farmers sending out spam things. Hey, yes. I'll send you a kilo of powder for $5, right? Yes. And I've literally had people that came to me and went, hey, your product is terrible. And I went... Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What happened? And he goes, well, not your product, but Kratom. I tried real, actual Kratom. Yeah, that's fucking... And it made me feel fucking terrible. And bullshit went, like ayahuasca. Yeah. They bought it online. Yeah, I'm like, I'm so sorry. Where did you get this? He goes, oh, from a real source, a guy on Facebook. I went... <laughs> Do I have to tell, do I have to, do I have to continue to explain to you? I'm going to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so again, if, if it's done correctly, if it's standardized correctly and it's meant for the intended purpose to help as opposed to substitute for an illicit recreational drug or something, the people that are involved in those businesses are going to do well. And that's where we are. So if you go into a Kratom shop, let's just go say you go into a smoke shop, right? You're going to see 20 different brands there. I cannot speak to the efficacy or safety of 19 of those brands. I can speak to the efficacy and safety of the one that I know because I control it. Those other ones, there were 16 deaths in the Netherlands one year that they all attributed to Kratom. They found that it all came from the same batch. They looked at that batch and it was more fentanyl than it was fucking Kratom in it. Still going to call that a Kratom death? No. Right? Um, News is. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing that we're finding is... You know, when someone ingests Kratom, it utilizes a lot of a particular enzyme. That particular enzyme is used to um, digest and assimilate. If you take Kratom with, uh, let's just say, an opioid, right? Because the enzyme is used so much on the Kratom side, it doesn't break down as much on the opioid side. And so it passes, the, the, you have more in your blood. It passes the blood-brain barrier a little bit more. And so if you take both of them together, it, it's not a good idea. I'll just put it that way, right? Okay. We don't want people to do that. Um, and hopefully you, you shouldn't have to, right? So there, there are things that the science is coming out that says, hey, you know, be careful doing it this way. Be careful doing it this way. As a matter of fact, one of our athletes who was in prep, you know, they were taking uh, Kratom with Clen, And they're like, man, the Clen is just giving me such a bad headache. And I'm not used to that. And it was the same thing. It was utilizing the enzyme. And because there wasn't enough enzyme to properly break down and assimilate the, the, the clen, it was causing headaches. It was causing an adverse side effect. So I'm not here to say that this is all hunky-dory and a bed of roses. I'm just here to say, use some personal accountability, find your experience, find what works best for you, and try not to do stupid shit. Don't drink six fucking energy drinks back to back. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much exactly that. The, the you shouldn't drink an energy drink mixed with pre-workout. <laughs> yeah. Probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, those are all those are all educational pieces yep. though that are that are, you know, we're talking about all the good, great, grand, wonderful and mm -hmm. all these crazy, but I'm not taking opiate opiates. I'm not I'm not I mean, I'm just eating a gummy at night before my peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, exactly. That's literally what I'm doing. Yeah. But it, it's, uh, those are important to know because whenever I looked it up, I saw the deaths yeah. in the Netherlands and I'm like, what the fuck? And then whenever you told me on the phone, you're like, dude, it's because of, that's why I was like the manufacturing aspect is yes. important because it's like, so that's why whenever it's like with MIT 45 uprising, it's like there has to be uh, ethical value there. Yes, 100%. So there was, a, there was a court case. It was a wrongful death suit that happened 
uh, over the last year or so of someone that was uh, taking Kratom. I, the, I, I, I don't remember the name of the company, but the result of the, of the lawsuit was not wrongful death because of Kratom. It was, it was because of the poor labeling and manufacturing and certifications that were done with this product. They showed a picture of the product. It was literally a white paper bag with a Sharpie written on it that said magic dust. Fuck. I'm looking at that and I'm going, maybe I wouldn't put that in my body. And I'm an <laughs> ex bodybuilder. I've put some things in my body I shouldn't have. That would be one that I would absolutely stay away from. What we've done, and I'll, I'll backtrack just a little because I know you mentioned MIT 45 with Uprising. Yeah. When Guy and I uh, started our company, we had all of these amazing athletes that really wanted to be on board. Um, we just didn't have the infrastructure to facilitate it. Sure. We were at the Olympia last year, Guy and I, and it was just a merch booth for Guy. I had a quarter of a table, um, and it was a last-minute thing. I'm like, ah, fuck it. Well, if I'll be there, I got extra gummies. Let's see if we can sell them. So we got there, and MIT45 was a large, large company. They've been around since 2012. They're, they're a huge counterculture-based Kratom company. And um, they decided to sponsor the Olympia. They had a gigantic booth. And it seemed like we were getting more traction, at least at the show, than they were. We just, Guy was there. People were buying our product. People were talking about our product. And then, you know, at the end of the show, the CEO of MIT45 came over and he pointed at Guy. I was like, fucking Guy. And Guy pointed at him and he went, fucking Ryan. Come to find out, Ryan Nidell, who is the CEO of MIT45, owned a suit making company uh, half a decade ago <laughs> and literally stayed at Guy's house, fucking made his suits and, you know, is an amazing business person. But that's they, they already had an embedded relationship there with with one another. And um, again, you're talking about how the universe just, just sort of works. And I've known MIT45 for a while. I, there were some things that I would have done differently if I was in charge or had some you know, small idiosyncrasies. That's why I have my own company. Um, and started to have a conversation with Ryan. And I said, hey, I love the Kratom industry. And I love what you guys are trying to do. These are a couple of things that I would love to do um, if we were able to do it. And he goes, not only do I agree with you, but those are things that we are doing as well ourselves. I'm like, oh shit. Well, okay. This is let's continue this conversation. Con conversation continued and continued, and what we found is that our values really intertwine with one another. And just like what you were saying before, I've been stabbed in the front and the back so many goddamn times that I'm literally just waiting for for this company to go, oh, you know, fuck you. I'm gonna just gonna take all your IP and do it myself. Uh, well, no, that never happened. <laughs> And so the, the conversation continued to, to progress and Ryan and MIT45 decided to partner with Uprising, allowing Uprising, that was Uprising Extracts, is now just Uprising. That is now the fitness vertical within the MIT45 name. Um, and I'm sure you've seen some of the things that we're doing. Uprising was a small little thing that says powered by MIT45. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the mission and values that we held is exceptional as standard. And transparency, truth, and trust are key. If we have those things, then no matter what happens, good, bad, great, terrible, we're gonna provide that information to anyone who is willing and wanting to hear it and allow them to make the decision that they want to, to make. And that information includes the FDA just doing a, an 18 month study that concluded that uh, powdered kratom is well tolerated with humans even at high servings. So now the FDA is quite literally saying, we've concluded that Kratom, at least on the powder side, is well, well tolerated. Um, we are at- meaning that, meaning that it's well tolerated, meaning that- The adverse effects, there, there's little to no adverse effects uh, okay. from, from, a, from a danger standpoint. So when people like talk about- It's like smoking a fucking pound of weed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. When people talk about overdose, for example, because people are like, oh, you can overdose. on Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You, you can't. And I, I know I can't make claims. I'm making that claim right now. You cannot overdose on Kratom lethally. It cannot happen. They just concluded a rat study where they gave a rat 240 milligrams of metragenine oh boy. for a rat. And it didn't recruit beta arrestin, which is what causes respiratory suppression when someone takes opioids. So 
and overdoses. It, overdoses. Overdoses and dies is when beta arrestin is recruited. Kratom does not do that at all. Yeah, in, yeah. So, so when people say, you know, oh, you know, heard that this person died from it or this person died from it, do a little bit of research. And then it's you know, crazy that they and that that the FDA did that study, and then you'd mentioned that yep. other studies are they're going to be in the process. Yes, correct. With you guys. Yep. Yeah. So there are, you know, the, the government works at their own time schedule, and we are less patient. So what we've decided to do is fund multiple different studies, whereas in 18 months or so, we're going to know how Kratom hits a male body versus a female body differently. We're going to know if there's an enzyme that causes a greater propensity to addiction or habit forming. We're going to know all of these different things. We're all doing that within our company for Kratom capsules, powders, extracts, and the, the, the written agreement with each and every one of those studies is whatever comes out about it, we publish it. And we tell everyone about it. If we find out bad stuff, we will tell you bad stuff. Have to. We absolutely have to. It is it is part of truth, trust, and transparency. It, and if I don't live by that, you're fucked. What name no, your name don't mean shit. Yeah, exactly. Man, pretty wild study that they that they didn't found that out though. It was. So what? So yeah. okay. So yeah. I guess from there then, if I'm taking twenty milligrams before I go to bed, mm -hmm. what happens if I? Eat, uh, what happens if I ate like five gummies and and like broke my threshold for being able to handle it? What well, occur? What occurs? Like, because I mean, you're it, talking it, about an overserving. Yeah, like you have to do dumb shit. Let's just say people eventually people are going to do dumb shit. Like I have no desire to do anything more than one gummy because I'm like I like really curse. So yeah. just to, if I drank a whole shot or like it was an overserving yep. or too much, they have something called the wobbles. Wobbles basically means you get a little vertigo, you get a little dizzy, you get a headache. Like oh shit, world doesn't feel great. And that's, like you feel you like you took too much exactly. as if you took yeah. too much pre-workout or caffeine or anything that you shouldn't have taken that's too much. That's quite of. literally what I tell everyone. I'm like, listen, if you, if it says take one scoop and you took four scoops and you're like, I don't know why I'm feeling terrible on this pre-workout. Guess what, motherfucker? It's probably because you took four times the recommended <laughs> serving. Like, I should have just drank one yeah. tequila shot instead <laughs> of seven. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, that's, that's part and parcel with every consumable that, uh, that enhances one thing or the other. There is a point in which there is a detrimental effect. That detrimental effect isn't respiratory failure and death. It's, oh, I don't feel very good. You know, people can throw up on Kratom. Okay, you know, if you take too much, you might throw up. Trying to get out of your body. That's quite literally what happens, and it's amazing. When, when someone takes, like, too much powder, oftentimes their body will literally go, nope, and then get rid of it. And the second they get rid of it, there's no adverse effects. There's no additional nausea. There's no wobbles. There's no anything. It's literally your body just going, hey, I don't like this. I don't want this. Get, Get the, the fuck, fuck out of me. And again, that happens with, yeah. you talk to people and like, oh man, I took so much. How, many, how much did you take? He goes, oh, you know that protein scoop that you do? I did that of powder three times a day. Maybe, maybe don't do that. Didn't do that. Maybe don't do that. You don't need to do that. Because again, that tells me either, you know, you, you've burned out your receptors in some way, shape or form, or... You are taking bad product, which means t one of those protein scoops might be one of our gummies. We don't know because we don't know how much metragenine is in that, that gram of powder, right? But what, what that does tell me is that's a lot of additives and a lot of stuff that you're not looking for in your body. If you're only looking for metragenine and you're taking that much powder, there, there's a lot of other yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, you keep saying powder. Whenever you say powder, you I'm referring sorry, to yes. kratom? Yeah, so the leaf ground up into a fine powder oh okay and then i haven't tried that don't okay no this is not for you um it, <laughs> thank you it, it tastes like dog ass <laughs> and everyone knows it <laughs> but some people prefer to do the powders because they don't want to take capsules the capsules are what do you do with the powder you make it a tea or a shaker some people literally shake it up yeah, yeah they, they do what they call it like a toss and wash which is kind of like a dry scoop that, that people do with pre-workout except imagine doing that with the bitterest tasting leaf you can possibly imagine that doesn't make sense in my head to pe why people would do so if you're trying to attain a certain effect because they don't want to take the amount of capsules that would otherwise take so a capsule is either 500 milligrams oh because it's a, a dosage concept exactly yeah so uh, if you look at a capsule they're either a 500 milligram capsule or do i take a really capsule. low dose yes that's good you take oh no i'm cool yeah. with it i'm yeah. i'm fine but yeah. i just i don't know what what are people's 
And I probably shouldn't bring this up, but we're on here. Fuck it. Let's fucking do it. What's what is what are thresholds of other people? Like guy like takes the 125 mix before he does cardio, and he's like fucking zoned in, dude. Love it. Yep. Fucking killing it, dude. Yep. You are. He's like, I could do cardio for two hours. He's like, I do do two hours. I'm like, you fucking look like you do two hours of cardio, <laughs> day, motherfucker. Look at you all losing all that weight. But he's yeah. like, he's like, no, I fucking love it because I'm yeah. in and I'm locked in and and cardio because again, like me, cardio helps yeah. hone in my day. Same. So, um, what it, it does like people take like I guess two fifty or three seventy five like do people do take people? multiple yes. times? Should they? No. no. Should they drink six of these? No. no. Do they? Yes. No. Whenever whenever we see somebody cranking three energy drinks a day, we're like, hey, busy times. It's <laughs> not not now. I'm just saying, like, we're on busy yeah, time. Yeah. You know, fucking fucking John back there. He'll be like, he'll be like, hey. First energy drink of the day, 10.30. And I'm like, John, you have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> By 2.30, he's like, I know, third one. I'm like, bro. <laughs> dude. Yeah, but you made them so small. It's like you have to drink a couple just to be the equivalent of one other yeah. one. Yeah. But, but no, it's, it's, and that's why, and that's why, I mean, I'm just curious. Like, yeah, we yeah, got yeah. So every, again, going back to the every body is different. My wife weighs 130 pounds. She takes more kratom than I do. Really? My uh, guy weighs, you know, 110 pounds right now. <laughs> I, love, I love you, guy. Uh, he takes 125 twice a day. Uh, Nick Walker, he would take two gummies before bed. Perfect. That's 40 milligrams. And he's yeah, 200, 300 pounds yeah. of, of absolute muscle. Yeah. He, uh, he took, he tried 125 milligrams for cardio. Absolutely loved it. Said it was incredible. Um, and I'm like, hey, did you go from 40 to 125? He's like, yeah, bro. I'm like, try 60 and he tried 60 he goes 60 felt just as good as the 125 i'm like great do the 60 then awesome and that's going to be the very difficult part yes. of educating people through this absolutely through this through the fitness journey yeah. because we immediately associate more is, more better. is better more is better and it's yeah. like and then and and, and pushing those thre thresholds but also because you're seeing mid 45 and uprising everywhere now in yes. the fitness industry yes. you, it, the, the the companies are infiltrating our fitness industry mm -hmm. and it's like yeah because there's a lot of benefits to it but along with that that's why i wanted you on here for the education portion yep. of this so we people could refer to it and be like look like there's this do this like start yeah. making those steps because that's part of the process that needs to occur yeah and i'll use energy drinks again as an example the first energy that can, energy drink that came out was a hard and then yeah. it went up to 120 and then it went up to 240 and 300 milligrams and now you have the ones that are out there they're like 450 milligrams. don't do those right? they literally just keep upping the ante because the more is better more is better more is better in the kratom industry it's much of the same it's when you have an industry that oftentimes people chase an effect they're going to continue to chase it and through that continual chasing you have companies that started out with, you know, 50 milligrams of metragenine shot. And now they're up to a 300 milligram metragenine shot. There are literally, you could buy shots that are 350 milligrams. In, I don't even know how I'd take it. I wouldn't, I'd just take a, like, well, that's the, like a that's little that's droplet. The problem. Two drops <laughs> is, the, is the difference between the best day of your life and you oh, man. getting the wobbles, right? Oh, man. So how does someone serve someone like that? And if you're just new to this industry... You gotta imagine someone who's never taken a pre-workout before because their mind is so ingrained to it. They're gonna go in and go, oh, which oh, let me go take, the... let me go take DBAP. Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah. Let me take the biggest one that, that's out there because, oh, I, I just want the best. So if someone's getting new to the Kratom industry and like, oh, well, you know, it, it's like someone looking at like a, a bike and going, oh, two wheels, that's great. And then they look at a car and go, oh, four wheels, that's great. And then they look at fucking roller skates and go, eight wheels, that must be even better. <laughs> no, there, there, there's there's a way to find the right right one here, right? Um, and, and so, uh, what we are doing within our industry is because the kratom industry is is not policing themselves in a in in a way that we hope that they would. We are going to police ourselves um, and create the exceptionalist standard marketplace. Have to. That means that every one of our products is going to have a 25 milligram serving size for each. 
So if you get a shot that's a 75 milligram shot, inside of that is gonna have a dropper. The dropper is going to be a particular amount that you take for 25 milligrams. 150 milligram shot, still, same thing applies. A dropper in there, 25 milligrams. It's just now you're buying a little bit more. Uh, are there going to be people that, that- That's what you guys are working towards with Uprising. Yes, Uprising and MIT45 are both doing that across the board for every single product. That's in the have. process of happening. Yes, absolutely. So every single product is going to be 25 milligrams so that people know, you know, at least the starting serving, this is what it feels like. And then if you go, oh, I didn't really feel it. Okay. Then go I on, take three carry servings on your way you, with, if you're like, if you're in that. So that's that that's you guys are working towards that when you when it because right now if people go in uprising, you can't get anything. Nope. Nope. Can't nope. get anything. We are we are finalizing. You've tried a couple of the prototypes yeah. yourself. I yeah. know that you fucking love them. And you got <laughs> Did I tell you about that... Hannah taking it? Mm -mm. Okay. He, he hit me up last week. He's like, hey. He's like, I know you're a PM guy. I got to send you some PM gel caps. They're 25 megs. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, Hannah and I took them. And we're like, great. You know, it's same effect. Hannah just likes eating a gummy. It's that personal, like, just eating yep. one, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was like, dude, I loved it. And then she uh, he sent AM and PM. Mm -hmm. Hannah doesn't do AM. I don't do AM or during the day stuff. So Hannah takes one and, uh, and I didn't know she was, she came home. I came home and she told me about it. She's like, Hey, <laughs> she's like, I took one of the AM ones. And I'm like, you did what? <laughs> I was like, all right. I was like, babe, like I, we didn't really have this conversation. Like how did it go? And she's like, I didn't like it. And I'm like, oh man. I was like, what happened? And she's like, well, I just kept, I kept doing my routine. I was doing everything I was supposed to. It was Friday. Because I was at work, and that's her day off. She didn't have nothing to do with practice. Mm -hmm. She All she did was uh, help Emmy with school, do the chores, go to the store, does her cardio at home, and, like, helps Emmy with school and then makes dinner for us Friday night. I came home. I was training with Ty, all these things. And uh, so she's like, I was doing all my stuff, and I just couldn't focus on what I needed to fucking do. And I was like, did you do everything you needed to do? She's like, oh, yeah, I got everything done. I'm like. Okay, I'm like hmm, this is what he Here's says is gonna happen because yeah. the blinders, because people say it has like an Adderall effect, but without the blinders on. Mm -hmm. And she's telling me how she couldn't focus on one thing, kind of how I, when I trained, I was like, I felt like I should be fucking doing more than just close grip cable pulls. Yeah. And then I was like, nice. I was like, okay. I was like, but got everything done. She's like, yeah, I got everything done. And she's like, but. You know, I did have like a crazy cardio workout. <laughs> I was like, I was like, really? She's like, I was fucking moving. Yeah. And I'm like, nice. And she's like, and the sauna felt really good. And I'm like, this is funny conversation. Let's just keep pushing. Please, I was like, yeah. so it wasn't bad? And she's like, no, I don't think it's for me though. <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, I was like, this is, I was like, so you got everything you needed to get done. You just couldn't focus. She couldn't hone in on what she was needing to do but accomplished everything and then had a crazy workout and felt great in the sauna and was like on her game, getting dinner. And she's like, but I just can't, <clears throat> she just couldn't get into it. Yeah. And I'm like, this is a quite the conversation. I couldn't wait yeah. to ask him, but that's what it does. It just, from, from with her, it just, she just couldn't get focused on it. And, uh, but she liked it, but she didn't. So, so the, it's actually very interesting. What we're experimenting with a little bit is the percentage of extract. So we talked about kratom extract and we talked about metragenine. Well, much like there's protein powder, right? There's concentrate, I, I, isolate, hydrolysis, et cetera, right? No proteins, yeah, exactly. everything. So that all has to do with the filtration and isolation process. Mm -hmm. With kratom, when someone says that they have 100 milligrams of kratom extract, that doesn't tell you how much metragenine is in it. Yeah. Because you need to know the percentage of metragenine that they use. There's a 45%, hence MIT45. There's a 75% and 80%, et cetera, right? And what we're experimenting with right now with those AM and PM is if we do a low percentage, so the PM ones that you have is 30%. That means that 30% of the extract is metragenine, the other 70% is other ancillary alkaloids. The AM ones are a 75% isolate. So now you're getting much more bang for your buck within the, within the, the, the kratom extract. So what she took was the 75% isolate. So what we're finding, what she's finding, is when you take a higher purity, that that actually enhances that 
energetic side because that she seems was there. To happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, you took the exact same amount before you went to bed. Yeah. But that was a thirty percent, and so that one made you go to sleep. Even though it was the same, it was the same fucking thing. It's just the other ancillary alkaloids in there. There aren't enough studies to show conclusively what one does versus the other, um, but there's there's enough anecdotal, much like what we're talking about, that says, oh, low, you know, low uh, uh, percentage extract is great for sedation in bed, and high is good for energy. Yeah, fucking it, wild. Man. It definitely. <laughs> it was just it was funny listening yeah. to her conversation about it. it I, it's almost sounded like a Yogi Berra type of inter- interesting. Uh, uh, paradox where it's like nobody goes there anymore it's too crowded <laughs> Wait, nobody what? goes there yeah. anymore because it's too crowded yeah yeah and and that's and i mean yeah it was it was an entertaining conversation because nice. but um so i guess uh i mean people can't get uprising right now because you guys are revamping everything online we are. Yep. if people wanted to experiment with this where do you suggest like, where would you suggest people start? Would you suggest starting the PM or would you suggest starting the M? Because we didn't even really talk about how it can help with mental acuity during the day. Yeah. If somebody wakes up and doesn't drink coffee or doesn't take caffeine or doesn't do anything, because some of the MIT-45 ones, like, mm-hmm. and they eat, there's there's caffeine in the gummies. Yeah, there's a small amount of caffeine. Yeah, like six mix. Yeah, I know. And I was there's like, more there's more caffeine six in my face in the morning. That's yeah. kind of where I was like, I was like, there's not much, but I was like, it's definitely helping with the uptake yep. of it all. So if someone wanted to try Kratom or mm-hmm. Metragenin, where would you suggest that they start with it? Like AM or PM or like how would you navigate that? Great, like Because we yeah. can't have these conversations like, Seth, your problems are sleep and anxiety and you have pain in your shoulder right, and exactly. elbows. Well, I would, I would say if someone listened to this entire conversation, first off, God bless you. Thank you for doing so. Uh, secondly, if... Anything that we said triggered you in a way that went, oh, I have that. Great. Hopefully that our product can help and work on that thing. And I would utilize it for that purpose. So if someone is, again, having trouble going to sleep, great. Try, try it before bed and see what happens. If someone hears that and goes, you know what? My head is always scattered and I, you know, I always procrastinate, then great. Instead of a cup of coffee in the morning with your breakfast, try, you know, try Kratom instead. Uh, I would say start with, again, I don't know the processes of, of most of the other companies out there. I know Uprising, and now that I know MIT-45, I can attest to their process and procedures as well. Their third-party testing, their GMP-certified facility that's done It's a big in-house. deal within the manufacturing side. Big deal within the manufacturing side. So I know what they produce, what we produce, being part of them now. Uh, that's where I would suggest you start. And if you're looking for energy, the Mitt Boost gummies or the um, the Mitt Boost uh, shot, those would be both good opportunities for you to at least see from an energy standpoint how it works for you. Now, you might take a, an entire shot and go, I uh, didn't feel anything. Okay, that's fine. Pay attention to dosages. Yeah, pay attention to dosages. Uh, with the gummies, the, the current iteration of gummies is only six milligrams of metragenine per gummy. So someone can eat essentially an entire pack and get more or less what you get from one gummy. So one uprising gummy was 20 milligrams. There's a six milligrams. So take three, four. But read the label first. But read the label first. <laughs> Definitely read the label first. I mean, that's that's our main thing. Like what we're moving towards right now, originally our bottles are 15 milliliter bottles and we put the recommended servings and we put all of that. But then we go, you know what? No one's going to fucking read it. No one's reading that fucking about thing. A tiny little thing. So what yeah. we're doing is we're, we are not only revamping our entire labels, and this one's taking a little bit of time, uh, we're now putting them in boxes as well. The boxes gives us a greater real estate as well as a pullout, the same way that you get on like a Motrin or an Advil bottle, yeah. to actually write, you know, size greater than a size two font, right? So that people can actually read it, read it. And, and get well adjusted QR codes on there so people can read the science. And the science is, is, is coming out more and more every single day. And I'm waiting for the science to come out that says that it is significantly detrimental. Um, hasn't happened yet from, from what I've seen. No, I mean, that's something that, I mean, you, you need, it's in, it's in so many things in life. And that's why whenever you mention Kratom, like it always had that dirty connotation. Yeah, I'm like, like, and I'm like, Kratom. but also I'm yeah. like, look at everything else. There's, there's nicotine, there's mm-hmm. cigarettes, there's chew Mm -hmm. there's the zins Mm -hmm. and then there's caffeine with energy drinks Mm -hmm. there's alcohol 
in every single way, shape, and form. And it's like, and then it's crazy that Kratom has this crazy non this yeah. negative connotation with it, but now it's starting to change because CBD had the same thing. Yep. Everybody's like, oh, CBD's so bad and this and that. And then now it's like old ladies are rubbing it on their elbows every single morning. Because Martha Stewart told them to. <laughs> But it, but it is beneficial yeah. for people in, in some way, shape, yeah. or form. And and it's just, this is going to be that educational portion of yeah. learning about this. And then also the anecdotal and then the, the shitbag companies, the, the... Weed them out. Yep. Everything yeah. will have to get weeded out at some point because it's just how this, how everything works in, yep. in life. Yeah. If you imagine every meme that everyone shares, all the soccer mom memes that you see, don't talk to me before my morning cup of coffee or can't wait to get home and have my glass of wine yeah substitute coffee substitute wine with kratom and today in 2024 those memes would get banned and posted as oh my god look at what they're doing yeah my goal is in five years that the, that will be as synonymous right because what what we are laughing about in that regard is a habit formed um process yeah right Someone has to wake up and have their cup of coffee. Someone has to that guy. get on, get to bed and drink, or uh, get on the couch and drink their glass of wine. Okay, what you you and Hannah are doing right now is you guys get in bed and you cheers a gummy and go to sleep and have a great night's sleep. That's pretty damn great. That's what I mean. That's why it's so wild. It's yeah. that, that concept that I'm like, because at night there's certain nights that I'll stay up later than usual, mm -hmm. and it's usually just because the the paperwork or anything I'm doing with work and taking notes and trying to figure things out. She does the same, and there's nights whenever I'm sitting there and I just get fucking zoned into my work, and I'm like I'm watching myself write this down. I'm like, man, this is crazy because I can feel how I'm operating yeah. right now. And you took the gummy before doing that, and that's what I mean. Like, because yeah. it's usually ten, fifteen, <laughs> yeah. twenty minutes later, and I'm like. I'm writing. I can see the fucking lead on this paper so well as I'm writing. This is crazy. And then I just keep doing my thing. And then I'm yeah. like, I got a movie on that I really like. And then after, you know, however long before my mind felt like being done with the the, the, the work project, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to start this over in the morning at the office. And I'm just going to sit here and I'm like, I love this movie. I'm going to go to bed now. Top Gun Maverick is the movie that I really like watching at night. I knew like that there nighttime. was a very specific there's one a, there's a about, there's yeah. that's the one. So it's it's crazy. It's fascinating to me on just how it all how it how it works. Yep. Yeah, and the more studies that are done, the more tests that are done, the more visibility we'll get to it. Um, we're we're happy to see like the FDA coming around and talking about you know the the study that they concluded and Johns Hopkins is is a great. Uh, asset of, of the creative <laughs> they're doing this they're doing the studies yep and the national institute <laughs> of drug abuse nida is also you know they they are influential in in getting the proper studies and, and tests done so so question then we're it. talking about how it ha how it helps you know with you know cardio and yep. zoning in and all that for someone like bob mm -hmm. or these because there's people that run triathlons and it, bob has had a massive influence on helping a lot of people that are uh doing triathlons or marathons and things like that i mean i haven't we haven't talked about how it's beneficial to them do you see the same con concept there for the duration of as long as they do train yeah absolutely i mean if they were to take it for a workout or something like that it depends on how long their training session is like i have friends that do ultra marathons and they'll you know they'll have their goo packs on one side and they'll have their gummies on the other and every essentially every marathon, they'll take another gummy. And that seems to work very well for them. We have people that, you know, take it for endurance sports. We have people that take it for combat sports. We have take people that take it for you know, basketball. We have people that take it for all of those different things. It's not just a, a pre-workout when it comes to like lifting weights. Yeah. That's so, what I'm trying yeah, to get at is, yeah. is yeah. how is, Intent, and I guess, right? yeah, it's intent, it's intent and then also like dosage for it. And it's just sure. figuring out that for yeah. every individual as well. So if you imagine someone's running a marathon and have you taken it on the bike yet? No, I haven't. I haven't taken the gummies, but like there's I, I take other things that are I don't want to say they're doing the same things, but I'm taking them for the same purpose, I right. guess. Like I, I microdose uh, mushroom caps, mm -hmm. um, especially before I swim. It just it helps me zone in on my swim and not overthink what I'm doing in the water. And then um, even down to 
uh, the like ketone IQs. Like mm-hmm. I take ketones like, you know, intra and like towards the end of my big workouts yep. because it just gives me this tunnel like vision yep. that that caffeine and just sugar and carbohydrates aren't giving me. Yep. Yeah. But it, it's like it sounds like a very similar like probably not targeting the same mental processes or chemicals of the body, mm-hmm. but a very similar similar effect. Yeah. Effect. The one thing that I would add to that that Kratom could possibly uh, enhance or assist in is if you have aches and pains and let's say your elbow or your knee or something like that as you're running. Mm-hmm. I found when I took it, you know, way, way when I first started and I was having aches and pains in my hip, I would be limping. I would take it 20 minutes later. I would be walking going, oh, my limp is gone. Oh, I'm doing something that 20 minutes ago hurt. That right. was, you know, and that was a low serving that I took, but that's what the response was. It wasn't like, oh my God, I can't believe I feel the way. No, it's literally just like, oh, that thing that was hurting 20 minutes ago isn't hurting now. And I mean, that's really interesting because why I would microdose mushrooms or take ketone shots, uh, it's for like the mental edge. Right. It has nothing. I'm still in a a lot of fucking pain at that point, you know, but, and and sometimes that actually does the reverse effect. Like taking those things, I'll hyper focus on the pain. pain. And then you're like, fuck, I just, this went down the wrong path. This was the wrong path. And for someone that as is as fucking in tune as Bob is every workout is important. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you don't want to fuck with the mojo. Yeah. yeah, and that's why it's scary because I'm always on. I'm like, hey, did you try this? Do you thank you for a bike? And I'm because I'm just yeah, asked them like, see did you yeah. take it on a bike? Like, how did it affect you? And it's like, no, I got my fucking processes, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm two weeks out from a race or three weeks out. I'm not fucking this up. And I'm like, right. completely agree. Yeah, I agree because yep. it's like every workout is so important. It's like you know, if if you're training for the Olympia or your bodybuilding show, it's like, dude, you are not, you are not putting the wrong condiment on this fucking meal. Mm-hmm. No, hundred percent. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. like, and that's why it's so touchy. And Every I'm, decisions that do or die. But it, for, for someone like Bob, that's why I'm, I'm so curious because this is an, our own little science experiment within the office yeah. that I give people gummies and I'm just like, how'd you feel? Like what happened? I'm like, I want to <laughs> yeah. know because it's just fun to find out it because is. of, uh, and, and, and especially with how in tune Bob is, it's like, I take what he says as gold because if Bob don't like it or if Seth don't like it, there's a fucking reason. It's yeah. not just because there's a specific reason yep. why we would like something or not like something. And I will tell you, I microdose. I take ketones. Mm-hmm. I also take Kratom. Mm-hmm. Does, that, does that make me a stimulant head? I don't know. Maybe it's possible. But I use each of them for different things. Mm-hmm. And each one of them has its own specific purpose and, and use that I find to be beneficial. I am absolutely mortified to microdose mushrooms. I, I mean, I was I was at first too, just because, uh, you know, abusing them when I was younger <laughs> yeah. wasn't fun. Like it was never a good time for me. Yeah, um, yeah. That's because I that's was so the guy funny. that loved mushrooms and Bob's like, I was like, man, you know, I'd get on one on a Friday when it's nice. I'm like, we should eat mushrooms. That's two, three grand. And, Bob, yeah. and, Bob, yeah. Bob, and, and now you guys are like, mm, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.5 and every Bob's day like, is really, yeah. yeah. Bob's like, no, dude, I fucking hate mushrooms. And then maybe a couple months ago, you were like, yeah, so I've been microdosing mushrooms. I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> yeah. do you mean? Like, like 0. 0. 0.2 grams, that's, that's it. Well, mm-hmm. I, pretty much his response is probably the same response that he had with you going, hey, I take this gummy and I feel really good. Like it's, yeah. it's you guys are getting the inverse effect of, of the same thing. Yeah. I just think they're cool. I love, I love, I, I honestly like whenever, cause I did the mushroom tea a couple of times in college mm-hmm. and then ate mushrooms in a fudge round, like all the caps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just remember that's what freaked me out because usually whenever you eat mushrooms, you'd have to like smoke a bowl or, or, or take a couple hits yeah. just cause your stomach's going to get super upset and super yep. worked up. And that initial feeling, or if you feel like you smoke too much weed, like that like oh no You'll hold on to that i'm gonna get trip. smoked yeah. and i'm gonna fucking i'm not gonna be useful that's what i got whenever i ate gummy the first time i was like oh i got this crazy pit and i feel like this what's going on i'm like fuck am i gonna get really fucking weird and then it didn't happen i just yeah. got like i was like oh but that that i'll feeling- even i'll even agree with that you know like you you told me that feeling and i kind of felt that coming on and then it never made me feel bad like i never felt bad yeah that, from it you know yeah because usually whenever you eat the mushrooms like you're fucking then all of a sudden you go Whoa. yep 
it begins to hit you more and more. But I always like the come down effect from the mushrooms because whenever I came down from them, I was always like, oh, I see like everything is crystal fucking clear. And then eventually I'd get back to reality and be like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> that's where the, the you do point two, I do point five. So yeah, yeah, I, that's that's where I get every every day, every other day. It's amazing, man. I always say like, if you imagine your brain is, um, uh, let's just say it's like a freeway, right? And there's gridlock traffic, and every single thought is a car. When you microdose, it just builds another lane, right? That building an additional lane allows all of those thought cars to move a little bit freer. The ones that need to find their exit can get off their exit. And now your thoughts just have a little bit more of a free flowing move. That's personally how I see it in my brain. Yeah. I, I'm pretty wild. I mean, yeah. that, that makes sense. Cause like it, it, it defines if I have a good or bad swim is yeah. whether I take my dose before, before or not. <laughs> like I'll, I'll go from overthinking the entire time my head's in the water uh -huh. to like, I'm still overthinking on this side, but then like I have this whole other thought process over here that's focusing on the workout and like getting after it, like not just, yeah. well, not the, just being the, there. To use that same analogy, that if you imagine that the thoughts of the cars and the mushrooms build a lane, when I take Kratom, it then soups up all those cars to V8 engines <laughs> and then they just fucking fire. I'm telling you, I mean, I was debating after this, we'll do a workout. Yeah. I want to eat a couple of gummies yeah. and do a workout. And just see what happens. See yeah. what happens. Because whenever I took it, I felt like I was like, I should be doing a CrossFit workout. Yeah. I was like, why? This would be this, this, I, because whenever I was doing the, the month of mayhem and doing all the functional training, yeah. I'm like, I could just do, I just, I was like in it. Yeah. It'd be fun. But I never took pre-workouts because I didn't want my heart rate to go any higher than yeah. it already was. Mm -hmm. And then I ate that and I'm like. Oh my God. <laughs> Where was this then? I was like, I could be doing burpees and then move right into pull ups and then move right into air squats yeah. and then fucking run a mile. I always say your body will give out long before your brain does. Oh, like, for sure. That's for that's sure. How it, how it runs. But I'm really excited to like experiment now after, after my race. Yeah. Uh, really, yeah. really see like, like how I can utilize it. I want to do, I again, I just wake up, drink my coffee. I like my routine. That's why, I mean, even so with you, like I, 45 minutes in the morning is not a four and a half hour bike ride mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. from not sucking down carbohydrates yeah. the whole time. But it's like, it's still very important to me and I don't want to fuck that up. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like, I just have been very hesitant to do anything in the morning because I'm like, I like my coffee and I do really good on my cardio already. Mm -hmm. I'm already good there. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, I don't need any more help. However, I sit and had my coffee this morning. I'm drinking an energy drink now and I'm like, Seth, Seth, <laughs> stop the caffeine. Yep. And I'm like, I said the same thing before I cracked this. I was like, I, cause I, I don't usually crack one till 2 PM. Yeah. Like that's my afternoon. Like let's finish the, the, the day strong. <laughs> I'm having it before noon. I might be fucked later. Like, yeah, I, 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 know. Just, I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm just, but it's in, 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 I don't know. I think everybody has those things in life. Of course they do. Nobody's yeah. fucking perfect. Anybody that's like, ah, you know, I don't do that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Really? You don't? Yeah, everyone has their own nice. devices. You yeah. don't masturbate either. Okay. Yeah, sure, nice story, sure. fucker. Yeah. These hands are for praying and nothing more. <laughs> but it's, uh, I don't know, I find it, I find it fascinating and interesting, the whole, the whole concept. I, I mean, it, it's uh, for as long as like from 2012. That's when Mid 45 began. Yeah. 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 And yeah. even before then, when, when did Kratom be, start becoming like, when did it begin to be sold? Early 2000s is what we're finding. So it it doesn't fall under the Deche Act. So it's not before even 1993. The, remember the Deche Act? The, no. Uh, that's the um, dietary supplement um, regulation. Where Anyway, we don't fall under that, but we're finding cases in the mid-2000s, early to mid-2000s is when it really started to sell and gain popularity, okay. which also ties to the correlated increase of opioids right so you're kind of seeing both of those things come at the same time like it, and i'll just say again I'm, I'm only giving facts here when there was an add shortage in america our sales skyrocketed no shit yes mm. 
<laughs> so, listen, mate, there's a reason for that. Man, I mean, are, are a lot of people, I don't, I haven't talked to many people about mm -hmm. this just because I don't talk to a whole lot of people anyway. Sure, sure, sure. You but in the industry, and I talk yeah. to Bob and we talk about business and yeah. do a good job with us. But um, would you, like, I mean, we have a bunch of athletes. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that the majority of people, what are the majority of people taking it for? And what is like, like, uh, yeah, and, that's a and great question. in our space, uh -huh. in the fitness yeah, space, yeah, yeah. what are, what is, what is the, What's the main reason people are taking it? Depends. I, I know that's. I know. Is that's it a like fifty percent? Is it? Yeah, but, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> is it fifty percent evening people like me, or would you say seventy percent of the people are taking it like pre workout or taking it morning? -workout. Most people are taking it pre workout or pre cardio. If they are in prep, they're absolutely taking it pre cardio and pre workout. Um, we had one of our one of our athletes who's a good friend of mine. When uh, I first got into kratom, I was like, "Hey, try this." He goes, "No, nah, man." I'm like, why? He goes, I tried that stuff recreationally and it, I didn't like it. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not going to push it on you. And then he got into prep and he's like, hey, do you have any of that stuff by chance that maybe I can try? <laughs> I'm like, here, yeah, try it. And then after that, he's like, do you have boxes of that that maybe I can procure from you? <laughs> and so from there, like, it, it's I don't, become a staple in the prep so world. So then, then here, you brought it up, dude. Yeah. What is, I don't understand the fucking recreational use of it. It's to chase a feeling. Uh, but what are you chasing? You, so. I guess I'm not there yeah, at a yeah, threshold yeah. or even. So Kratom is one of the few things in this world in which it has simultaneously a feeling and an effect, right? If you go into a smoke shop or a counterculture store, you're going in there for a feeling. Whether it's Delta 8, Delta 9, nicotine, Kratom, you're going in there for a feeling. You want to feel something. When you go into a nutrition store, nine times out of ten, you're going in there for an effect, Right. Even if that effect is energy, it's recovery, it's vasodilation, it's protein synthesis, any of those things, right? Yeah. Kratom bridges the gap between both of those things where you can, it can provide you a feeling and it can also provide you an effect. So the amount that you're taking, you're watching Top Gun Maverick and you're going, man, I feel fucking good. I like Top I Gun awesome. Maverick. I love, I love Top Gun Maverick. This is awesome. I like right? doing paperwork this is, and this is amazing. <laughs> being right? inverted. So the, then there are people that take that and, and go, oh, that that's what twenty five milligrams made you feel. Great. What a, if I can I redline on seventy five milligrams and have that same feeling massively intensified? Some people do. Some people don't. You know. So what you feel when you take it isn't the same as when you talked about guy taking 125 and going, I could just fucking do my cardio and I can do every other fucking thing. Yeah. It's perfect for me, right? Yeah. Imagine that feeling, but without purpose, I guess would be the best. That's not a good say. idea, though. I'm not saying it is. Yeah. But I don't understand. Like, the, the whole recreational side of it, I just, I guess I... People drink I mean, these for flavor, right? It's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Right? But, but... But I guess I don't understand. Like, I I guess I'm trying I to. I'm, I'm I think it's because you have you have found. No, 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 no. Like recreation, like yeah, like recreationally smoking weed. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to I like to take a couple puffs uh -huh. and go to a nice dinner with Hannah. Sure, like it literally helps us mm -hmm. unwind. I'm not high as a kite. I just like to take a couple puffs, and I'm like, man, took an edge off. Yeah. I'm going to go have a glass of wine or a fucking old-fashioned and eat a meal. Yeah. I'm not going to have any more than one, maybe two drinks. I'm going to have a nice meal. Hannah and I are going to be together, converse about life and mm -hmm. anything but work. You know what I mean? But I guess that would be a recreational. That's recreational. Yeah. That's technically recreational. Yeah. I mean, so I guess, yeah. I guess I was looking at it from getting fucked up. Right, exactly. You know? yeah. And that's and not, some people, and, yeah. But I guess that's kind of what people, the guy was saying. Like, yeah. I took it recreationally. Like, whenever I think of recreationally, I think of, like, I guess, me and immediately, like, too far. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and, abusing, that's, and that's abusing how. Abusing it. Abusing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, but I mean, if you're going to, if your if your goal is to abuse something, you're going to. Like, a recreational drinker or a social drinker is different than a fucking. I would say caffeine now is almost more recreation than it is use. Think <laughs> yeah. About, you're mm -hmm. right. Think about yeah. People are driving, they grab an energy drink, yeah. and they're driving. It's like, oh, no, there's a- Drive energy drink. Literally. Oh, I'm getting gas. I got to make sure I grab my energy drink. Mm -hmm. what, they're, they're not doing it because they're crashing at, you know, in the car. 
Yeah. They're doing it because they're like, oh, I'm here. I got to do that, right? You know, put it on social media. <laughs> exactly that, right? Yeah. And so it's it's almost become more recreational than it is anything else. Now, there is a benefit to energy drinks. There is a benefit to caffeine. And there are a great amount of people that use and utilize it for that. But there's also the industry that goes, oh, well, I'm I'm just a... I'm just a three energy drink kind of guy, man. What does that tell you? Like, what does that tell you? Is that, that's, that's just the guy. Right? That's, yeah, we yeah. got those. We, yeah. we know the guy. Right? That's, that's the dude being a bro. Man. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the one thing that I'll say is, you know, if you drink six energy drinks a day and you drink six of our shots a day, both of those things are not a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you a little it, bit of personal I, fucking responsibility. I even, I even tell people not to buy a pre workout called DBAP. There you go. People love it. Yep. Yep. Because it's a crazy high stim. And I'm like, I don't take it. I didn't even flavor sample the shit. Uh, Won't do it. We have a 125 milligram shot. And I literally, I've, I've said it on this podcast. I take less, the most that I've taken is less than half of what that shot is. Yeah. So when we do R&D on that, I hand it over to Guy and I say, you fucking tell me, man. And, and yeah, and that's, and, and that's part of the process because yeah. even with everybody that we do with sampling within the company, and yeah. it's like whenever we get a new pre-workout in, the effects of so the things that we've been working on, I'm like, I don't fuck with this. You so tell me. tell me. You yeah. guys, people that take it, Aiden being John, everybody, even flavors. Like yeah. we can't be like, like, what am I going to be? I'm the end all, be all with yeah. the flavor. That's a really bad fucking marketing concept because what happens if your taste buds aren't the same as the 75% of people? Exactly. Like cream soda. <laughs> all the credit goes to Shane Healy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't think it's a good idea, Shane. And he's like, I think it's a fucking great idea. And I'm like, I think it's a bad idea. I don't think too many people like cream soda, dude. Like, does everybody like cream soda? I like cream soda. <laughs> Enough but for, I for it to be an I energy liked, drink? Yeah, I didn't like, even know I liked cream soda until I grabbed this and went, oh, fuck, I fuck with cream soda. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> yeah. saying that. But it's like, and that's why it's important to get other people's opinions and, yeah. and not be so egotistical that you think that you're the end all be all and everything is in your head and you're always right. Right. But it's, uh, no. And the that's cream again so- where, where, you know, when, when people ask me what to take it for, I'm like, take it for whatever whatever you want to enhance. I know that sounds like a fucking cop out, but it's literally true. Nick texts Nick Walker texts me every day he does cardio and he goes, "I can't believe how awesome my cardio is." I got to take it before cardio. Lee Priest mm-hmm. texts me every day on WhatsApp going, "Mate, my like I'm you not know, gonna do it, but one he's guy, like, yeah. That's one guy I have not met. I haven't like uh, yeah. I met him in 20 or 2003. Mm-hmm. I think at the Pittsburgh like whenever he was yeah, still jacked yeah. as fuck, but I mean, he's little bit of an asshole yeah at some point you would have thought that we would have crossed yeah. paths together yeah and just, are like magnets right i know yeah. it's like it's, it's like somehow yeah. i'm like that's one guy i'm like yeah. man i'd love to shoot the shit with lee at one point well i mean we have we have events we'd love to invite you I, to him. but he <laughs> yeah he takes it because he tore his pec and it works amazing for him uh you know we we have people that when they pose they say oh man i take kratom before i pose my mind muscle connection the way i can just hit my poses my stamina we have people that before they get up on stage literally take a shot or a gummy because when they get on stage their stamina they're able to hold their contractions for longer they're able to do all of these things it's it's such a wide ranging use of of why people use and utilize and and after saying all of these things you and i just got off the phone with goop yeah. Goob's like, man, those 75%, I am slaying it on the poker table, man. <laughs> he's like, like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. He's like, I know. I, it's just, that's what I mean. We can't, like, wh- how are we supposed to know we're coming out with a with an amazing poker supplement? He's like, he's like, I'm fucking killing it in poker. <laughs> I'm like, oh, dude, what are you doing? He's a fucking character. That yes. man is a, so I have Love a picture good. with him. Uh-huh from the either the Olympia or the Arnold years ago. I can't remember. Uh-huh. I met him when he was a fucking kid. Yeah. And then I saw him because I've been following him for a while and yeah. just love all his shit and just, you know, DM him here and there. And then uh, uh, he popped up at the Natural Body event yep. in New York. Yeah. And I was like, Goob, I was like, this is great. Da, da, da. And we were talking. I'm like, dude, this is so cool. And he's like, I actually met you yeah. years ago. And I'm like, really? I was like, how did that go? And he's like, <laughs> it was one of the greatest conversations I had with people at the event. I'm like, nice. I was like, he's like, you were the same fucking guy you were then online and right now. 
And I was like, nice. And he's like, he's like, you just kept told me to keep being me and keep yeah. fucking working hard and doing cool shit, this and that. I'm like, that sounds, sounds like, like something, something I would say. say. <laughs> and he's like, you took a picture with me, this and that. And I look back, I have the fucking picture. And he's a much smaller version of yep. him. I showed you when you and I first started talking, a picture of you and I together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same, same fucking thing. And, uh, but I don't know. And then, but anyway, we, he was on the phone with him and I'm like, oh, nice. And he's like, I'm killing her on the poker tables. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah. So again, like, oh. it's, it's so difficult. Branch takes it before he goes to bed. As we've already spoken about, you take it before you go to bed. Uh, Hunter Labrada takes it before his workouts and his cardio. Nick takes it before his cardio. We just have, I mean, the list of people that we have on our team that, absolutely love what it how how it enhances whatever it is that they're using it for it's, it's fucking insane. wild yeah there's no there's no company that has the level of talent that we have on our side and the only reason that we have this level of talent is because of the quality of the product these are not people that are like what's the contract okay pay me i'll make a post it is I tried the product. Holy shit, this is amazing. I want to tell my people, oh, wait, you're going to put me on salary too? Even better. So there's a difference between those two things. It is. It, and, and the fact that, and I mean, Guy has a lot of, Guy's really good at just being himself. And that's sure when it does not lie. No. Guy will just tell you, that's that whole joke about being an East Coast dickhead yeah. that I, I repeat on this podcast a lot. But it's like, Guy's just going to tell you exactly what he thinks and how he feels. Every time. Every single fucking time. Yep. The whole time yep. and whenever it was with this it's like um it's like people will always side with him in anything that he does because he does not fuck people over. and that's what ended up happening with mit 45 when they were trying to come into the fitness space they're like hey you know i'm going to contact this person this person this person this person ask if they want to be part of the team every single one of the people said sorry man i'm friends with mark or i'm friends with guy our loyalty goes over there and so that's why the partnership works so well because they have an infrastructure that we were needing and we have an influence that they were needing. And because we align our, our Venn diagram, the center is truth, trust, transparency, and exceptional standard, that's why it works. You know. <laughs> Fucking crazy. It is wild. It is, man. <clears throat> yeah, it's man. crazy. It's crazy what the world has, has, so. has brought us forward to. When is when do you guys plan on launching everything with Uprising? So right mm -hmm. now we're finalizing the uh, labels to make sure that they're fully compliant. Then we order the labels. Once that's done, we have new and improved flavors. We have the updated uh, packaging, as as we've mentioned, all of those things that the products that you've tried and loved. Yeah, we have we have everything just rearing and ready to go. Awesome. You any, any other questions? I don't know. That's what I was. I'm. I'm. I think we covered. We covered a good bit. Yeah. Do we want to talk about Napoleon's cock now or what? <laughs> <laughs> Big film guy. Big film guy. That was. The, that was. That's how we started uh, the conversation. I think. I don't know. It was like right when you got in the truck. It was. We I was trying talking. to make a very big, valiant point, and then I'm like, oh wait, hey, Napoleon's you, cock. Did you see the movie Napoleon? And I'm like, no, I've been wanting to watch it. He's like, you're gonna laugh more than you're gonna be in like intrigued by like the the fight scenes. And I'm like. What the fuck am I laughing about? It's like a it's like a docudrama, like a big fucking deal about Napoleon. He's like, ah, oh, dude, he's a complete cuck. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? He's a cuck. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I got I gotta watch it. I gotta watch a movie. And I mean, that's also like we we talk about a lot of films and like especially like nice. older school, like I don't know, the good stuff. comedy movies. Yeah, and the all the one liners, like that's I mean, most of our our videos and our skits are based upon one line in oh, comedies yeah well i yeah. do tell people that with our product 90 percent of the time it works every time <laughs> that's exactly what i mean that's exactly what i yes, mean that's where we're going. <laughs> no i gotta watch i gotta watch it i uh i finally just started watching more movies but only whenever we're traveling or at night uh hannah travels for gymnastics so like on those on those weekends yeah. that's whenever i'll like SJ will go to sleep at 9 30. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna watch a movie on a Friday night. Nobody's around. I could watch whatever because Hannah and I never agree on movies. Yeah. And the second she fucking lays down, she goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. We'll put on like a movie that she wanted to watch and she's fucking sleeping 20 minutes in. And I'm like, bitch. Dude, you're why'd you make me, me care about this relationship? Oh, God damn it. Sucks. <laughs> so, uh, but no, no uh, Top Gun Maverick. SJ likes that movie. Now he's like, can we watch the plane movie? Nice. I'm like, yes, we yes, can. We can. Yes. <laughs> You'd be a fighter pilot. That'd be <laughs> sick. Oh no, no! Nah, this is uh, this is awesome. Aiden, do you have any questions? I do. I think he killed it. 
Good. Yeah, I'm good, dude. I'm Aiden's ready like, to I'm fucking. Pack I took, I took it. I took it the one time. I'm ready to try again. When'd you try it? Uh, whenever he had it the first time, he gave me a gummy, and I just took it to edit videos at home and shit, and I was pretty productive. Yeah, it's uh, we we call it the pro- procrastination killer for a reason. I did take it with an energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden is 23 years old. <laughs> I was like, yeah, natural caffeine natural kratom fuck it i'm in <laughs> sure sure why not man uh, i mean i'm not gonna tell people not to do that i'm just gonna tell people to use their <laughs> use their uh uh their their own uh, mental choices yeah make your own decisions yeah, make your own decisions don't man. be an idiot yeah but no i appreciate it this was yeah. awesome coming in yeah uh, thank you man come in yeah. i mean i guess for more information you'll be able to go to uprising very soon we'll so make sure our website we... is i am uprising.com I am uprising.com or you can go to I am uprising underscore on uh, Instagram. That's where you'll find all of our stuff. We uh, just started filming and we'll begin to roll out educational videos using and utilizing all of our athletes. Oh, as well. Great. So a full social media bliss, full education blitz, all of the stuff that if I wasn't able to answer here, or if you look at me and go, I don't fucking believe you. You're wearing an uprising shirt. You're an owner of the company. I don't fucking believe you. Maybe Hunter Labrada can tell you otherwise. Yeah. Like, great. He's going to say the same stuff I am. But if if that's what it takes, then great. Well, that's why you have athletes yeah, and that's why you have credibility behind it. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, me being an unlikely person, I will say probably the biggest advocate that you could talk to about would be Hannah. <laughs> just because the beginning, the conversation yeah. that we had with it all, just because she's like, look, they look like shit. <laughs> I'm like, Ice, babe. Ice. Yep, yep. But it's, 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 I don't know. It's cool. It's, it's very interesting. And I mean, I'm excited to hear about the studies too. Yeah. Like yeah. as it goes on Absolutely. and, and everything that you guys are doing, I'm pumped. Awesome. Man. It's awesome. Thanks. I love it. You got anything else, Bob? That's it. That's it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Other than that, yeah. everybody, just make sure you guys are buying just work and accent and slides supplements and doing all that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta plug your own. Yep. No, Shameless but, plug. Yeah, but uh, no, everybody, thank you guys for listening. And again, I am uprising.com. I am uprising.com. And also on Instagram, I am uprising underscore. Perfect. Fucking A, everybody. Thank you guys for listening and make sure you keep being good motherfuckers. See ya.